would like to call the meeting, meeting to order uh, between Public Gilbert and Virginia School Boards. Uh, at this time, I would like you to turn all electronic items off so they don't interrupt this meeting. Um, <clears throat> any, I don't think we have any special guests right now. There is a binder. Okay. I can't hear you. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, would you please turn off your electric or your uh, portable items? Okay. Got plenty. And then there is a binder over on the table. Uh, public copy of board materials contained tonight's meeting. Uh, available for public review at the side of the room. Uh, meeting agendas are also available at the table. <coughs> Um, you may also ex access the board agendas uh, by visiting the district websites and clicking on school board agenda and minutes. At this time, we would like you to stand and the site and pledge allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, we would like to uh, entertain comments on the agenda only. No questions per se, but comments on the agenda. If you have any, please raise your hand. Seeing that none, we will continue on to number four on the agenda. Discussion of the commissioner's review and comment on proposed building bonds. Okay, we're gonna leave that up. Mr. Anderson, Chair Anderson, Chair Eddy, members of the board and the community. Um, for those who don't know, my, my name is John Hunick with Carl Sanderson. Um, for those who don't know, um, a district is required to put together a review and comment that goes to the Minnesota Department of Ed which is then reviewed and then ultimately approved or not approved by the commissioner. That has been done and as of I guess a week ago now or two weeks ago, uh, both districts received a letter from the commissioner approving the projects. At that time, um, those, that approval letter was published in the newspaper. Uh, another requirement is a meeting like this that we're having right now for the community to have the opportunity to ask questions about the review and comment, um, and obviously many, many other questions. Uh, we also will describe the project, which I think most people here are aware of. But So the letter came back from the commissioner approved, and it summarizes the project in a description. Uh, I won't go into detail, deep detail, because uh, I think most people are aware. Uh, it's an academy style 712 high school uh, that was approved and that was 113 million 672 okay that was part of the review and comment that it was approved a new elementary school in virginia and part of that project there is portions small portions of the building being saved and ultimately a new elementary school in virginia for 26 million 917 <coughs> $758, and this information is on the table too, by the way. And a new elementary school for Eveleth Gilbert, and that dollar amount is $29,507,587. <coughs> there are other costs that go along with, um, with the referendum um, in terms of there's budgets for site work, um, purchasing property, uh, that's the existing building site. That's uh, eight million four hundred and five thousand one hundred. And then there's other costs for bond issuance. And so, anytime you pass a referendum, you hire a company that basically will sell bonds. And there's a cost of issuance that goes with that, along with other legal fees and things like that. And that's four million five hundred and seventeen dollars. Okay. So that, that's the grand total of all those projects that are listed in the review and comment and which you'll be asking questions on. Is there anything I forgot to members of the board or Jeff or Noel that I could add to it? Okay. So 
I went through that quickly. Again, I think we're here to answer a lot of questions. And from there, I'll turn it back over to the school board to, um, I believe, get your questions. But Mr. Anderson or Addy? I don't have any. So now we're at 4.2, summary of the projects to be funded. We're actually at 4.4, Mr. Chair. 4.4, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry, I, I wrapped in 4.1 uh, through 4.4 are basically pretty much one subject on your agenda in terms of the letter approval and the overall totals of the project. Yeah. 4.4 right now. Uh, the announcement was the letter from the commissioner was published in the Salvi Daily News <coughs> on April 24th, 2019, indicating that it, it, this project was approved. Now we're at 4.5. Questions from the school boards or the public. Is there anybody from 2154 Public Gilbert School District who have any questions? I do. I've got a comment to make. I've looked at this whole project, the amount of money it's going to cost the taxpayers and have what they go with. <coughs> By the way, my name is Dale Zamlin, and you'll see my letter in there to Mary Wicker. Ricker, excuse me. Do you know that the taxpayers share of this? I'm talking to the fellow from Carlos Anderson and the rest of you people. Won't even be enough to cover the interest on this loan or bond. And I want to let you people know that I was here during the Great Depression that the people on the range had in the 80s. And it's not when or if these mining companies shut down or slow down again. The people on this range communities will lose their homes like they did back in the 80s. This is very wasteful spending. And our schools in Evel of Gilbert are just fine the way they are. You people need to reconsider what you're doing. This is extravagant spending and skullduggery. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. I have a question, Mr. Dano. When you say the interest on the loan won't cover, what do you let interest on? What loan? I'm saying is that $2.7 I mean, just, just, million for 20 years, that's $54 million. $2.7 2. million. Okay. If you take the interest on 180 million at four and a quarter percent, you're in the 70s to 80 million dollars for 20 years. But I don't believe you'd be paying any interest on the 96 million from the IRRB. You're going to pay on the bond. Yeah, but that's not. Am I correct? You know, my other that? point about the IRRB money is. It's not guaranteed to be there. I know, but I don't think we'd be paying interest on the money from the IRRB. No, okay. So that's going to take a huge chunk of what you just said. Obviously. So say take half. So now you're down to about 35 to 40,000. So you're pretty close to that 54 or million, pretty close to that 54 million figure. Check in to see where you were at. I've lived on the numbers. range all my life except for my military service and when I lost my job in the 80s so I could feed my family, I left the area. Okay. Thank you for your comment. We do have a specialist from Ehlers, our money people. Hi, yeah, the um, interest rate that we're currently using is 4.1%. Those are the estimates that we're using right now. Um, and then the total interest that we're calculating is $75 million approximately. <clears throat> And then the IRRB money will um, uh, be calculated after that. So the interest on the bond on the borrowing will be that much. But then um, when the debt service is actually calculated, the IRRB money comes first, and then the taxpayers will pay the remainder. There's no guarantee that money's going to be there. There's no guarantee. When the, the world market, if you look at it, what could possibly happen if these tariffs come off? These places will close down. You don't understand how these mining companies operate. Fuel costs go up. Cost per ton goes down. All of a sudden, in months, this stuff could change. A lot of you people weren't even around in the 80s. I was. I was. A lot weren't that are here and supporting this. You know what? I love this Iron Range area. And I love the idea that we're going to increase education for the the kids are on here. 
but you can teach people in a garage, you can teach them out on the street. Our voc ed years ago took me a long way. And it took a lot of people a long ways. I don't know what we did, but everything doesn't have to be done with a computer. Most of my life has been around computers. I went in the military, I served in the US Navy as a nuclear submarine sailor, and I saw computers back in 1973 and worked with them. Worked without them. And you know what? A pencil and paper go a long way still. Thank you. Anybody else? I just have a quick question. Are we just commenting on the financing part right now? No, we're commenting on the whatever. Okay, I, I do have a question. Yeah. My name is Lynn Gorsh. I live in Virginia. I have a daughter going to Virginia school. But um, under the fees, permits, and testing, if my math is right, is that 35 million? <clears throat> Can't you consolidate that down to one lesser than that? I mean, that, I'm, if I'm doing the math, that's 35 million just for fees, permits, testing. 22.8 for the high school, for uh, the Virginia Teardown is another 5.5, the new Ellen Schmier is 6.6 million. I mean, that's 35 million, just fees, so I don't know what fees it is, permits and whatever testing. Can you comment on that? Yeah. Um, so majority of those numbers, they're, they're missing the words F, F, and E, or furniture, fixture, and equipment. So if you build a new elementary school or a new high school, you all fit them with, with tables, chairs, technology, like you see on the ceiling there. Um, so I would say 80% or 70% of that money for that, what, they, what they're calling fees, permits, and testing should have more, another line item called furniture, fixtures, and equipment. So majority is for that. Um, the permits are just a small fraction, if you will, um, of that dollar amount. So hey, essentially you're saying 80% of that 35 million is furniture. Yeah, so the way it's going in the building. Industry uh, nationwide, but let's just call it Midwest, when budgets are put together for um, a new elementary or a new high school, um, they always apply what we call a soft or an owner's cost. And it's usually from between 20 and 30%. We use 25 for an average. And I would say a good chunk of that 25%. So if you do that math with the numbers you want, it'll be pretty close to 20, 25%. But a huge chunk of that is for furniture fixtures to outfit the new school. Hopefully that helps. The fees and testing and permits are actually a, yeah, like I said, small fraction. Listed differently. Yeah, really. How come they put it in that category then? Yeah. I, um, I'm not sure why the commissioner wrote the letter that way or ran out of room. I'm not, I'm not sure. But that, if you remember the overall budget sheets when we put together, and I think we even sat in this room and I sat in your boardroom, um, there was that the budget of what we thought construction mm -hmm. would cost and then what we called soft and owner cost. And there was a list of like 20 different items on there, everywhere from fees, permits, testing, legal costs, and then furniture and equipment, that was in that 20-25%. So there is another spreadsheet that has a lot more detail than what the is. Any other questions from the Evelyn Jordan side? I'm Tony Jeffries, I'm an Evelyn resident and an Evelyn graduate. I just want to say I'm pleased that the Commissioner of Education has found the project favorable. A lot of work goes into these objective analyses and I, before, I can't stay for the entire meeting this evening, but I just want to emphasize to everybody in the room of the tremendous amount of work that has gone into all aspects of this, including the financial side of it. And I want to impress two things. One, if this project does not move forward, that your taxes are still going to be impacted, and they're going to be impacted to maintain elderly buildings rather than new programming. And, and let, me, let me make the analogy that if you're a car collector, you like to restore your cars. That's fine and dandy, but not everybody's a car collector. And we're talking about putting systems into old vehicles to make them a little more refreshed versus getting new vehicles with the solid state of, uh, systems that everybody likes in their cars and their vehicles these days. So before you attack the financial side too critically, Please, 
explain why you don't see that not doing this is going to cost you more in the next 20 years. <coughs> Thank you. I believe there's, yes, ma'am. Um, I have a, a few statements and a couple um, questions. I live in Eveleth. I have children who graduated from Eveleth. We have children who graduated from Virginia. And um, sir, I, I appreciate your comment about pencils and papers now. They're still good. I um, also believe in that, but seeing what the schools are using now throughout the country, we have to keep up with the other schools. And everything is technology now, or the majority of it is, and I think we need to focus on that. I do have um, a question for two board members from Eveleth, um, Ms. Polly Sorkin. Are you familiar with um, EdWatch? And what is your affiliation with them? I did look at your resume um, online because I'm a voter and a taxpayer in Eveleth. And there's no mention of EdWatch or the other Chair groups? Maddie, I believe that uh, this is out of order, it's not on the agenda, I think it's very relevant. But these are questions having to do with this Excuse me. collaboration. I will, I will consult with Jeff and, and Noel. Is that an appropriate question to ask at this time? It's an audience member who's asking the question. Okay, but it's not an but, agenda. But you do have to keep the questions relevant to the agenda. Okay. This does. I would maintain that this is not relevant to the agenda. This is a personal um, question. It has nothing to do with the agenda or this project. So you're a school board member, though, ma'am. It has to be. This isn't a personal agenda. question. This is a school board question. And so what is your chair? Yeah. It's deceptive because Why? it goes, Ed Watch is the group you that this question. I haven't board. been approached it's by any of these yeah. people that was I in this board. board. I'm not talking about it. You know what? She has the floor now. You will have you. your turn next, ma'am. Everybody will have their turn. Yeah. Thank you. But I would like to call that question just a little bit out of order. Do you have any other questions? I do. And I guess I'm a little confused about that because it has been published and it's um, common knowledge. And that is not on her resume when she listed what she is affiliated with and her experience running for a school board. So to me, that's... Um, that is not transparency and it is a bit deceptive. My other question is to the rest of the Ella Gilbert School Board, um, or before, I'm sorry, I'm gonna preface this with another question to you and Mr. Gentilini. The meetings that you had at the library in Eveleth were no meetings and they were- Mr. Chair, this is not relevant to this meeting, to the agenda, and this, these are personal questions Totally not I think it is. I think it is relevant. Well, you you're board members. I think, I think that the question in regards to them having meetings is the same as the, the, the guest committee having meetings. And I feel that they are, their meetings were open, but, and they should have been, I mean, the yes, I guess the no group should have, it should have been a published meeting to attend. Exactly. So. I heard that. That's the answer. Mr. Chair, if you could, uh, Mr. Chair, I think you need to uh, alert the audience that you requested an attorney's opinion, mm -hmm. and the MSBA also has given direction on on meetings and the proper proper rights of people on both sides, including superintendents, teachers, and board members, and any other employee. And we have that ruling. And it's it's a legal thing, so this is totally inappropriate. Totally inappropriate. I don't know why anybody would be afraid to answer a question that coming from the the public when there's so much deception, so uh, deception going on. Uh, the the questions that are being posed to be against <clears throat> this school project um, are misleading. And I think the public has a right to do it. And if you so, if the person, if they ask me a question and I refuse to answer it, then, you know, then I'm guilty, I guess. I have no idea. But I mean, if you're involved with something, one should speak what their, their mind is. And I, I could continue with this. 
as an elected official and being from Evelyn and being a taxpayer, um, I would think that because you're elected, unless I understand this incorrectly, you are supposed to represent us and work for what's positive for us. I don't think it should be denial or trying to find a way to cover things up or to escape answering them because you just don't want to. So I, I guess I would like an answer um, as to why you would vote yes to bring it to a vote as the entire Evelyn Gilbert School Board did and then two members sitting at this end of the table <coughs> decided to run no meetings, vote no meetings, and that's, I think, you have deceived the rest of the board. I would like to know what the other board members think of maybe your, your side meetings or whatnot, but when you vote yes to bring it to a vote to something, and then you decide after the fact, nope, we're going to go on our own and, and do our no meetings and do a no campaign, I would like to know what the other members of the Elvis Gilbert School Board think of that. Let's not forget, and this is the last thing I'll say, facts matter. Don't put stuff out there that is not true. This money is given to us as a gift. No, it's not. It's so taxpayers' money. It's taxpayer money. The Get off the gift stuff. The it's taxpayers' money. Oh. The opportunity no. for us no. to get this money, the she opportunity lies. is a gift. Wrong. Without that, we will have schools in our area that are falling apart. They might look nice from the inside or from the outside. Go inside and see what the water is like. Well, you can't because you can't drink out of the faucets. The buckets on the floors. The Evelyn campus does not have a lunchroom in the senior high. I don't know how that works. So I'll get back on track, I'm sorry. But if the other members of the Evelyn Gilbert School Board could express how they feel about being deceived by two guess, members of the board. I guess for clarification that when the vote unit, when the vote came down unanimously, it was a vote to bring the referendum to the public, regardless of where you stood. That's the way I understood it. Correct me if I'm wrong. If anybody in here would tell me that <coughs> it was a, it was a vote to bring it to the public right. to say yes or no. Did it have to be a unanimous vote? Excuse me? No. Did, no, it, no, it didn't have to be. Okay. But I, I guess I'm confused as to why they would vote yes. To bring it to the public. Okay. Because it was bring it to the public for a vote to see if they would support it, either yes or no. Am I saying that right? Yes. Can, can they answer that question so we know what they were thinking when they voted? I might know what you you're, you're answering, but maybe we want to hear, or maybe the people from Edward Gilbert want to hear, why they voted there and what they did what they did. Before we go any further, I'd like to apologize for raising my voice, but let's keep the civil, let's keep the order. Please raise your hands if you have a comment. All people will be able to comment, all right? Just don't blurt things out. We try to keep this as orderly as possible. And I apologize, that was kind of my gym voice, sorry. <laughs> it was. Never thank, say that. thank you. So I will hopefully answer your question um, pretty condensely. So my thoughts are transparency is important, and I and I know that there's been concerns previously to for Director Sorkin when you came on the board about concerns with transparency. So I feel that transparency is very important, and there's questions about transparency with with what happened. So that is one issue. The other issue that I have is that I feel that each and every one of us as board members have, the public has a right to question our views of something. I've taken multiple phone calls at home, have spent hours on phones explaining why, why I feel, why I'm in support of this and why I, um, what it means to our community and what it means to my children that are currently go to our school. And I feel that the same should be given to whether you're, whether you're clearly in support or whether you're not in support. 
that we should still, as elected board members, answer to our community. Thank you. I think I I think I personally personally been pretty clear whether it's when people have called me or I've talked to people um, at meetings like this. People have their right to choose whichever direction they want to go, whether it's a yes or whether it's a no. As citizens, we have that right. But when transparency has been demanded of us board members in the past by other board members, I do think the same as Kelly, that transparency goes both ways. And you need to, you need to be transparent if the citizens have questions for you you are elected officials and you should be answering those questions. So can the, will those answers not be answered? Excuse me. I, I, you know what, I would also like to say that... <clears throat> we do have another. I would also like to say one more thing, if you don't mind. You know, the majority of these meetings, I would say all of these meetings have been very respectful. People have not raised their voice towards other people. There has not been any name calling at any of these meetings. And I would like to see that continue because I do know what we are teaching our youth. And I want to show our youth that we as adults can be adults and not bully as well. Um, and I have, also, I have also done that in search, certain situations in the public or on social media, I have done that as well. So I feel like that I've held to my end of the bargain when I ran for the school board and I feel that other people should do the same. Mr. Hillen. So I guess the thing about the, the whole 13-0 vote and the, and the, it was just to send to the public, um, that is one thing. But when you combine it with the statement, I believe I know a good deal when I see one, that kind of gives everybody the curveball. Then when I, I tend to agree with, with uh, Brandy and Kelly that the transparency just isn't there. This was a good, it was a good deal if you support it. You didn't say that, no. <laughs> that was not. We, that was, um, that was not a formal vote. We could not have taken a formal vote at that meeting. So, so if I could real quick, the questions that I asked to Ms. Sorkin weren't answered by her at all, and I, I guess, Mrs. Nelson, I will not answer those questions because this is a personal interrogation. It's and not. Law, listen, to, listen now, it's my turn. By law. The law requires school boards to hold a public meeting to discuss the review and comments prior to the date of the bond referendum election. That is what we are here for tonight. This is not the venue for that. And, uh, um, and on top of that, it's public. I submitted my comments to the commissioner um, and the review and comment process. Now you found out that all of my comments were not uh, submitted back to the boards and uh, the three parts that I submitted, which was not um, actually all of my thoughts either. So I stand with my comments to the public. I stand with every word I said, and it's their self-explanatory. Okay, but if your your comments or your association with um, <clears throat> whomever groups that are against public education, I would think would be a conflict of interest for you to be on the board. Well, that's your opinion, ma'am. <laughs> that's, that's, that's your opinion, ma'am. You have to write your opinion. I think we've been opinion. asked yep. and answered. Thank you. Other questions? Do we have other questions over here? No, I think so. Statements, questions? <clears throat> we have a gentleman over here. You're up. Yeah, you're up. Point. If a school board member can't uh, disagree with the board, this is... A, this is just retaliation because somebody disagrees with you people. You want a rubber stamp for the school superintendent? That's what it's amounting to. No. And what she's going through, I've gone through myself. Email attacks, social media attacks. This is what we're teaching our children. You people are making a very poor example for a public school education system. And that's what's happened with our public education system. I would just like it to be clear that I have not seen any of the board members um, attacking 
So I have, I just, I have the emails here even if you want to see them. Are we, I'd like to see them. Because yeah. I, I have not I have not seen any attacks I, from school board members. All I know they're uh whatever I didn't know who could catch your name, but as me as a board member me as a board member, I'm actually I mean I'm actually gonna talk about me. But I'm being attacked by a former board member that I do not support this project, which is crazy. You know, I do support this. So if anybody of you out there are following social media, and I know probably 90% of you guys are, that there's a gentleman that used to be on our board that keeps saying that I'm part of this conspiracy theory, I'm kind of behind the scenes. I'll just clarify that I am behind this project 120%, if not more. Good. Okay. Um, All right, know. Crystal Scuffy, Fail Resident. This is to Polly and Tom regarding your letters in here. I want to know what are your infrastructural needs and educational, I guess, vision for students. I have a fifth grade son who would gain to benefit from this. So I want to know how, if this doesn't go through, what is your vision? Obviously, you are against this. So how are you going to bring our kids into the 21st century? Kids don't learn the same as they did 100 years ago. Jobs have changed from 100 years. We don't have the same jobs we did. Education changes. We as teachers are changing all the time. So what's going to be first? The roof, the exterior, heating of the 1922 or 1970, 1917 air units, plumbing. Is there going to be any interior or space updates? Are you going to tell me there's not going to be any cuts to sports or the fine arts? Are you going to tell us you're not going to close Gilbert? I want to know what the budget is, and are you going to raise taxes? If this doesn't go through, what is mm -hmm. your vision? Question. To make it clear, when a vote came up to put this out to the public, to both districts, I voted yes. And the reason I voted yes was to give the voters the right to make their own decision, yes or no. As far as my opinion goes, my personal opinion is strictly up to me. I have said I will support whatever that vote comes out with. If it's a yes vote or a no vote, as a school board member, I will support it. Now, at my last, that last meeting, right after the close of the meeting, and the meeting was adjourned. I was harassed by the audience leaving the boardroom. The meeting was closed. I was harassed all the way through the boardroom, down the stairway, and even in my vehicle. As I was about to leave, I was harassed right on a passenger side. Now, is that the democratic way of doing things? Isn't this still America? We have uh, freedom of speech? Whatever my opinion is, that's strictly my opinion. And I should not have to answer to anybody on my own opinion. I don't pry into your life and ask you personal questions. You shouldn't do it to, my, to me either. The question was about the schools. The question was about the schools. There has been no question about the plan. Yeah, so what is, Nothing like this. what is the vision? I guess that's the question directed mm -hmm. towards Polly and Tom. What is the vision for the district if this vote fails? <laughs> my vision, my vision is that this is the only option that has been presented to both communities and both school districts. Now, to me, a choice is between one or more things. I think there are many other options out there that have not been explored. This is the only one. And so I think we should go through the exercise. And no, I don't have the answers to all those, but that is what a community and a, and a, a, a school district should do. Very thorough uh, study and search of other options. We did, so, we did for two years. That's my, we haven't been for two years. You started with transportation and a business manager two years ago. Yeah, and, and it's it bloomed in, sports in one and buildings. Well, you know, and, and those meetings you were never Are we at. bantering here now? I thought they were having decorum and being right. uh, no yeah. name calling and we're right. have so let's, just stay, let's stay on topic with the question. That's right. So, and Tom, you have your vision? Well, my vision is that a building does not create <coughs> and make a world-class school. And I mentioned that right to Senator Bach at the end of the 
IEEE meeting. The teachers and the curriculum is the ones that make a world-class school. And that's important. I want to see our students be able to get an education that they can go out any place in the world and compete with. Back in 2015, I tried to do this. And I had the support of the IEEE and I have a letter from the governor, which I gave to uh, Dr. Schmidt, uh, commenting me on my efforts to create one centralized industrial tech area where we would supply the whole range and give the kids hands-on before they graduate. Because I tried to impress upon the board at that time Order. Go ahead, Tom. that all of our kids, their students, are not going to be college material. And by giving them hands-on before they graduate, it gives them direction which to go. And he agreed with it. I took for me agreed. At that time, that particular board, I wanted to create what I call the exploratory committee to go out and talk to Virginia, talk to Mount Nair, and talk to our surrounding area, and see what they thought about this. The board would not approve that committee. I had engineers, I had professional people that were willing on their own time to go out and talk to the districts. It never materialized. I think, yeah, I think order, so order. I had order. more education. Like I said, I had poor education. <clears throat> no, I'm not completely 100 percent sold that this academy model is the correct way of doing it. That's, I'm, you have to prove that to me. Thank you. We have a question back here. I don't know if I necessarily have a question, but I think that what Holly and Tom are saying is confusing what the question to them was. And people were asking them what their vision is. And their answers are fine, but I think what's missing here is the fact that there were 100 or more people over the course of two years looking at all those different choices, Polly. They looked at them. And when we do a vote, we have to decide which one we want to vote on. And there were hundreds of people that participated in these committee meetings, community members, that gave input because our school districts decided we can do better. And everybody was involved. We looked at all the different options, staying by ourselves, using the old buildings by ourselves, using the old buildings together, putting together a new building, three new buildings, and all of us pooling our resources and making sure that all of these kids have the options they deserve. These are the types of options that are gonna make them more employable when they leave. More of these kids are going to be more employable. And people start talking about test scores and why test scores are so important. Sure, they're important, but employers and colleges have all agreed that kids are not getting out of school with the skills that they need. And those skills aren't just measured with a test score. Kids need communication skills, critical thinking skills, all other types of things that this career academy is gonna offer these kids. That is huge, that is a vision. We looked at different options, the ones that you talked about in your letter, the different scenarios that UNESCO came up with in 2015 that you think might be a good idea. That information, along with a lot of other information from experts, was put to these community members and the decision was made that this is what we're gonna put on the table and let voters decide. And that's what should happen. Everyone can look at the information and say, I agree. And if you agree, vote yes. If you don't agree, vote no. That's it. I got a question for Tom. Tom, we've had many, many discussions in regard to your plan, in regards to the technology thing, okay? That was what, six years ago, maybe? Six, eight years ago? You didn't get the support from the board at that time and 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 how the funding was going to be for what you wanted to plan i guess i don't know how the funding was going to be but if you fast forward to today and you look at the funding and what you wanted to do back then tom it's going to happen if this is vote is a yes it's exactly what you 
Uh, but but, 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 but uh, take, take in consideration, Tom, the funding mechanism is, is it's a better opportunity with, with what you what you wanted to do. I mean, we can fund this with IRRRB money, and you don't have to go to the taxpayers and ask them to fund 100% for one district. Now we got two districts, we can offer more. It'll, it'll make the districts more efficient. I mean, that's how I look at it, Tom. I mean, you, me and you have known each other all our life, Tom. And this is exactly what you wanted. It's just we're doing it in a, in a different building with a different funding mechanism that's not paid that's not going to cost the taxpayers 100 percent back in 2015 i trip rb met with that board on two different occasions mm -hmm. explaining the funding equipment and everything <laughs> what would go into that building mm -hmm. yes i could see building one building for that a new one correct look at our buildings now they're 100 years old they've been remodeled they're not falling apart mm -hmm. there's a lot of statements <laughs> out there that are, have not been proven but how, do, how would they're we throwing out there? But how are we going to get Virginia kids? I mean, when you look at the concept, I get it. I get it, Tom. But we're two districts. We're, 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 we're not only do we want to do this, but we want to bring two districts together at the same time to offer more. Mm -hmm. And the only way we can get that money is if we're together. If we go to we collaborate. Am I wrong? Anybody mm -hmm. can. I would. Yeah. And, and my comment goes with this particular subject is. I remember as a teacher standing in the break room looking at the three diff different options we were offered for refurbishing our school A, refurbishing our school B, and then building our school brand new C. And I remember one being approximately 40 million and I gulped. I remembered one being approximately 50 million, forgive me if I'm wrong, I, ca I can't remember the numbers exactly. And then I remember one being around 60 million and I was shocked. I was like, oh my goodness, how are we gonna be able to afford this? And then, Things have gone, you know, as planned in the direction that I believe your vision was. Mm -hmm. And now I see 39.1 million is what the taxpayers are going to mm -hmm. have to pay between three districts. So that's approximately 10 million per district. When you take 40, 50, and 60 million to keep our current buildings and refurbish at 40 million, refurbish at 50 million, and rebuild at 60 million between two districts, that's to me, that's a no-brainer. I mean, I, I could be missing the numbers. Maybe I'm, uh, I'm wrong in what I perceived on the break room table. I can't remember exactly what the numbers were, but I think um, saddling it, saddling the costs between three districts is much more logical than saddling those as astronomical costs of 40, 50, and 60 million between two districts. Now, I could be wrong in those numbers, so forgive me if I don't have them absolutely correct. But right, um, thank you. So in response, just in the last two weeks, as far as our school's not, not falling apart, um, one morning, our band room was 90 degrees, and we're expecting students to learn and practice in that environment. The very next day, it was like 56 um, in the same room, and again, we're expecting students to learn and practice in that environment. Um, we've had... A, something a light or something fall down in our gym during a class we've had something fall down from the ceiling in our band room and luckily our band teacher was fairly fast and got out of the way we can't drink the water i mean that's the reality i haven't drank the water in Evelyn gilbert for years um, for our school districts that's not okay and, and i agree that our our teachers is what really drives a school and everything else, but our teachers are, in, are behind it. And I don't care how great of a worker you are, if you don't have the right tools, you're not gonna do a great job. And this, our school building are the tools that our teachers are needing. So that's what I just want. Okay, my name is Linda Asmos, I'm the I was there when Tom recommended that a long time ago, and I also told him about having like an academy, and the board voted it down. He had funding available, he had people in place, and the board voted it down. He had no choice in that. My thing is, I'm coming to this, and I, I'm just I'm trying to break this down. Like, they, you know, Polly and them have their opinion. We all have our opinion. We don't have to tell anybody what our opinion is, because our vote is private. So I could say, yeah, I'm voting for this, and I could vote no. So you don't know how anybody's going to vote as it is. 
when I started, when I listened to this in the first, I feel, feel like I've been in a bait and switch operation. I was all, I am, I am still for these academy and these kids learning this stuff. I am not for all this new school stuff at this time. I feel, get those academies going. Are they even doing anything? And the superintendent says, if this doesn't pass, the academies are out. Yeah. Why is that? You're gonna to have to wait for these schools to be built anyways. You're supposed to get these academies going so you know how you're gonna be teaching this, what stuff you're gonna need in these new classrooms, and how, just how are the students gonna be able affected? Are they gonna be able to take the classes that some said, well, they didn't have enough people in it, they're not gonna get the class. They have too many people in it, they're not gonna get the class. How long do we wait? I think the academy should be put in first and see how that goes. I will also vote no. You might as well know how I'm voting. I'm voting no on these schools. One, if we're going to collaborate and consolidate and everything else that you're talking about, then we have one elementary and we have one high school. Why are we building a new elementary school in Virginia and they have park here? Why should they get two elementary schools? Gilbert and Eblis get none except for the new one on the highway. If we're going to have all these kids, it should be all in the elementary school, all in the junior, in the high school. There's no reason. Then you would save a lot of money right there, not building another elementary. And their elementary school <coughs> will be built back downtown, landlocked, in a business area. You might as well move them back. We might as well stay in Eblis where we're in a residential area, and our kids can still walk to school. We're not going to be busting them across the highway. And what else did I have to say? I said, they talk about bullying and intimidation. That's why I felt about the superintendent and his letter and everything else. He talks about all this fear mongering and everything. So he's doing the same thing to any no voter. If you don't vote this, you're against the kids, you're against education and everything else. And that's not necessarily what we are against. We are all for you teachers and we're all for this academy stuff. It's just that the way the new school, this the thing is gonna be, and you don't even know for sure if it's the high school will be, where it's gonna be, they have done no part stuff or anything else. I feel we need to let it go and just go on and make our academy see how it goes. We aren't even in a collaboration consolidation agreement yet. And who knows how that will go. I mean, the academy is important and that's the way it should go. The new buildings can wait a few years. Because the build, yeah, you say it's falling down, well then get it fixed and the school boy will have to do something. Like this. They'll have to fix something. And I'm not saying doing a complete remodel or anything like that right now. But get, so that you can attend classes and get your academies in place. How that's gonna work. I wanna know how that's working and how those kids are doing on the education part of it. We have no idea. You can look at other schools, but we have no idea how it's gonna affect our kids in this class. Thank you for sharing your vision. What's the guarantee these new schools are gonna be as good as you think they are? Yeah. Our general contractor here has problems with schools in this county. Yes, they do. Hey, you know what, what, what I'd like to see is a general contractor that stands up for their work because I know the range uh, trades do good work. All they have to have is a general contractor that follows up so the work is done right and the plans are right. Uh, Excuse me, but uh, the range taxpayers were cheated once already. Can I speak to the question? Right. Thank you. So there is no guarantee. That's the reality. And, and that's what I would tell my eighth grader or my fifth grader. There's no guarantee in life. But I also tell them not to settle, that we can always do better. I can be a better mom. I can be a better wife. I can be a better community member. I feel like our school can be better. And I'm not okay just settling. And I, and honestly, I feel like it's settling. But is there a guarantee? No, but there's not a guarantee that I will be here tomorrow. We all know this. And, but I'm not going to not make decisions because of what if. Um, I feel like I'm an educated woman. I have my master's degree. I have gone through school. I graduated from Elbeth Gilbert. Um, they have a fine education system there. But I also think that we can do better. Well,
it, it's been brought up about the academies and uh, do we know when it works and when will it happen and every all these questions. The first thing is on May 15th, when this, trying to be positive, when this vote passes, that's when the rubber hits the road. That's when the teachers and the administration from both schools will start in the direction of the academies. We're not gonna wait till the new building opens to start there. We are gonna start, and that's only my opinion, but I think I've heard other people echo it over the, the 50 or 60 meetings that I've attended in the last year. So it's not gonna be happening in a vacuum, it's gonna be happening starting this year on May 50. Oh, Mr. Jeffries, I know that you want to, you have to leave, so. Thank you, thank you. I, I just want to say I'm really sorry I can't stay for the whole meeting. I would really like to, previous commitments. But I want to thank the collective boards for all the work that you've done and for the opportunity you've given me and many other citizens and residents to participate in the project. I don't think it could have been a more community-oriented project the way other than the way you've done it. Uh, the, the, the topic at hand tonight with a vote to us, the public, in two weeks is comment on the Department of Education's document, which has been found positive. Spend your energies on that. Don't spend your energies on interrogating the side and, and any, any resident or any school board member. I wish you all well. And I hope you all do good for the community at large. Thanks for letting me participate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Thank you, Tony. You had your hand up earlier. Uh, I, I think everything was was. I actually the, the comment I was going to say was I just wanted to thank Mr. Gentilini. Um, what he gave his vision, he actually spoke of exactly why we want to do this. So I want to thank you, Mr. Gentilini, for reinforcing exactly why. This is the, the model that we uh, have worked towards and what we want to do. Um, I, well, Hank, I have the chair, I'm gonna stand up. Um, Linda, I've known you my entire life. I, I love you like a mother. Um, I've known your son since we were little kids in school. And, and your comment was, let's try the academies first and see if it works and then go that direction. Well, I was skeptical when I first went to Alexandria. I didn't know what it was gonna look like. I didn't know anything that was going to go on. Um, but what really stuck out to me was the flexibility of the structures that they had there. Um, we talked to some teachers, we talked to some people who were within the program. They said that one year a particular class had 10 people in it. The next year they had 40 people that wanted to take a particular class. So we needed to move spaces, we needed walls that could move. We couldn't do that in a brick and mortar building because they only housed so many people. So, so Linda, on your comment there, why can't we try it? We don't have the flexibility. We don't have the space to actually make this happen. Um, I sat this year at, at Edward Gilbert uh, when we were making decisions on, on kids being in particular classes. And I know some kids wanted to be in a particular elective class and they had to get called in one by one and say, I'm sorry, we do not have room for you. You can't be in this class, so you have to pick something else. So now they're picking classes they don't want to be in. Why did that happen? If we had bigger spaces, if we could recreate and move walls around or whatever, that would happen. We could make, we would have flexibility and kids would have those options. So, so it's not about anybody wanting a new building for the sake of a new building. It's we need the new building because the new technologies that are out there make it flexible and make it possible to accommodate anybody who wants to go on these career paths. And that's my observation. Uh, yeah, uh, Lori Jam, I work in the Franklin Elementary, and a couple of comments. Um, first, I'm going to go off of you because I had not thought about the elective situation. Um, I had a daughter graduate last year and another one this year. And in their four years of high school, not once did they get the electives they chose. Not once. And that makes me sad as a parent because of exactly what he said. Either there weren't enough kids to support the class or there were too many. So they took classes and they took study halls that they did not want or did not need. Um, as a teacher, I want to talk to the old buildings. Anybody that knows me knows I love the buildings. 
I love them. They're gorgeous. If they function, I want to stay there. But they don't. Every year when I come back from summer break, every year in September, I get a sinus infection. Pretty bad. And I am not the only one in our building that that happens to. I get it cured. I'm pretty good. I go home for Christmas break. In January, I get another sinus infection. I'm not the only one. Guess what happens after Easter break? Sinus infection. Those buildings are not functioning. They're not good places for kids. They're beautiful to anybody who appreciates that. If you ask my kids and their friends, they will not have fond memories of the high school. It's a dump. They don't like it. They hate it. They deserve, the kids today deserve to leave high school with memories of having a fantastic experience there. That's what you had. Our kids deserve the same. I can go now? Yeah. 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 I didn't well, catch your name. We're just trying to get it. Yeah, I know, I understand. I thought it was more about the school project, but anyhow. Um, again, my name's Lee Gorsham. I kind of agree with sort of in a particular this gentleman here. What is the contingency plan if one of these financing options fail down the road? And I'm, uh, just, just to comment on that a little more, I, if I'm off line, but I remember agreeing with it some kind of commercial building that failed and the taxpayers got stuck with the bill. Same thing with the, um, the biking stadium. What happened if that funding's failed? We're stuck with paying it or something. But I'm just saying there should be a catch-22 for the taxpayers if something of this fails and we're stuck with more of the cost. There has to be another a third option for funding. I don't know. She'll take it. Yeah. Yeah, so the, um, the way the debt levy is set is structured is that once <coughs> the districts sell the bonds, the debt levy payment will be level over the full term that the bonds are outstanding. And the first thing that is calculated after that debt levy is determined is the state aid. So the state aid is kicking in the first part. And what that's doing is addressing any ebbs and flows um, in the, the tax base. So should and actually these bonds qualify for quite a bit of state aid relative to quite a bit of school districts. And so you are getting a lot of state aid and it is responsive to, um, like I said, that ebbs and flows. So if a commercial building were to close or a business, um, so that, that value then doesn't shift to a, like somebody that um, would buy it, buy it or it just <clears throat> devalues, then you or the districts are gonna look for a relative to, for a per um, pupil to the, the state formula, and you're going to get more state aid then. More state aid is going to get So if the triple RV the funding doesn't pan out, it's on the road, who's responsible for their share? So the, um, the, first, the first calculation is the state aid. So then ups and downs in that, then the state aid reduces that. So then um, the next portion is the, um, the triple, I, triple I, triple RV portion. Um, and if that... I, you know, I think that the way that they've structured it overall is pretty conservative and looking at what is going to come in on their production taxes. And though there's been changes in the mines and closures and openings, um, the, the level of production has stayed relatively constant over time. And so they took a conservative approach to at what they thought they could contribute over the term of the bond. And um, should that change, then um, then the portion that is on the taxpayers would go up, but I would just say that the largest portion that is being covered with the debt levy is the state aid portion. Um, the second largest portion then is the IRRB, and then the, um, the levy or the um, amount contributed by the taxpayers is just under 20%. Thank you. Um, and <clears throat> Angie Kemp, I work uh, in the Edward Gilbert Schools, and I have kids that go to the Edward Schools as well. Um, a couple of my kids graduated in the trades, and I just think that it is key. They just want to go along with what Tom was saying about having the trades in the high school and not wait until they get into college and are paying lots of money, college dollars, to get that training. I would love to see that be more accessible in high school. My kids were not able to get those trades classes. Um, ninth grade was the last 
grade that my son had a woodshop class because there was too few students so they couldn't run the classes or we had too few students that they couldn't um, fix their schedule. It's a scheduling issue. If we only have one section of a class, that's the only class period that it's offered and then it conflicts with one of their other requirements like an English or a, you know, a core subject. So the schedule is, is one thing. Um, I teach my kids, I teach math and I teach trend lines and <coughs> status quo, we already know what status quo is. If we leave education like it is and we leave things the same and, and we do nothing to the variables, we know where our population is going. And it, it doesn't take an eighth grade education to make a prediction of where our population is going to be, not just in the school population, but the community population, unless we throw a variable in there. And I feel like this project is a huge variable that could change that population growth, and I hope that it would change the student population growth. And it, it's at least something, because we know what status quo is. We know what we already have, okay? And if we wanna just stay what we've got and be back in the good old days of the whatevers, you know, we've got that already, okay? We already know what that is. Let's do something different, okay? That's one. Two. Um, if our buildings, and I'm just, you know, reading through the reports that, you know, there have been no professional studies done, no specific deficiencies documented, um, the process is, you know, on and on and on, we can all read, we all have the information, then our buildings are awesome. Isn't it true that we could sell these wonderful sound buildings then back to the public? and maybe the cities would want to, to repurpose them, if this is a yes vote, those buildings are still up for sale, right? And if they're sound and they're awesome, then we should get a pretty penny for these buildings. And demolition wouldn't be necessary. So wasteful demolition, is, it's not even there. There's no demolition at all. We got a pretty penny for these beautiful, wonderful sound buildings. I'm upset. <laughs> <laughs> My concern is that this area is based on the mining company. Now we've talked about the mines going down. We've talked about the IRRRB going down. We give a lot of money to the state of Minnesota. A lot of money from here goes down to fund the state of Minnesota. Now she's talking about the state of Minnesota is going to pick up anything that is not payable by the IRRRB or whatever. Don't you think that if the state of Minnesota is hurting in any way, don't you think they're gonna abandon us up here and say to heck with we're paying, paying for these schools up here? That's just common sense. And, and the, the amount of money that you're asking for this is ridiculous. I'm for education, yes. And I think kids really should get more trade school education myself. But this, we're counting on IRRRB for sure. Now, I just got a statement for my taxes for next year. They went up 13, no, no, excuse me, almost $14,000 for nothing. I have done nothing to our house. Our, our assessment, excuse me, our, our assessment for taxes went up $14,000. Now, is this what's going to happen every year? Are my taxes going to keep going up and up and up so that they can get more taxes out of me to help pay for this? Well, this be at, be at the I know that, but I mean, it's all, it's all hooked together. Everybody thinks this is free money. Where does the money come from? It comes from us, the taxpayers. IRRRB money comes from the taxpayers. The state money comes from the taxpayers. County money comes from the taxpayers. It's taxes, the federal government. Where does it get its money? From the taxpayers. So, it's, granted, I know that, but still, it's still our money. So, I, I'm just saying, we may end up paying for all of this. You've got to stop and think about the amount of money here. Yeah. Yeah. I have a couple of comments to make, a couple of examples. If you look across the, through the window there, look mm -hmm. at the Merritt Elementary School over there. Yeah. When they first built that, it was about 20 years ago, they built it without walls. 
and it became a nightmare for the kids that we had nephews and nieces that went through that school and it was terrible. They had to spend a ton of money to build walls that are only halfway up. Now Parkview Elementary in Virginia, they didn't have any classrooms at all. They're just movable walls and they haven't worked out. So they have to spend money now to build walls in that school. And also the new the new school building, the new Mount Iron School Building has a water problem like crazy. Uh, are there any guarantees that when they build this so-called academy that we're not going to have to spend more money to straighten out the problems that they created in the first place? Because so far the public education system has done nothing. Population has gone down. People are pulling their kids out of school. There's more uh, home uh, schooling, which is not good because we had the best schools in the world when we were growing up. We were seventh in the world. Now what are we? 14th, exactly. 17th in the world, change. we're just going downhill. And to have teachers <laughs> come here and, and pound you down to build a school, that's like having a fox uh, watching the, the hen house. There's no control over any, and as far as transparency goes, I cannot even get an estimate of how much you people have spent on advertising brochures. Not only that, but you didn't even do your business here. It's all done out of the cities. You've, you're asking the community to support your school system when everything is being farmed out. So how much has this printing got? You can't even get an answer to that. This uh, TV thing, I've been calling that uh, cable uh, 5 and 12 email. I can show you the emails. They don't even bother to answer. Nobody's ever returned my call. So we wanted to get uh, some public input. Uh, input into this, we can't get it. So if I talk to my friends at Village Inn or, or Perkins over here and we're discussing this school thing, am I guilty of having a closed meeting? These people have a right to their opinion and so do we. Uh, as far as what you're calling facts, almost all of the facts that you're stating are opinions. They're not facts. In fact, your own brochure right here would solve the whole problem of this whole school issue. Take a look at it and study. Just build an online school. You'll have no more school shootings. You'll have nothing. So there's, you've got the problem. You've got the school right here, and it will cost $200 million. Are you the designer of the school? No. You're just the input of everything? Uh, construction <laughs> manager, we are. But I can probably answer a design question, boss. Um, I got two questions, but I'm not sure why we got two elementary schools. But in your opinion, between the two new elementary schools that are going to be built, can one of them house all the students? No. no. Both of them. Okay, but I don't understand why we're going with two. My second thing the design of this building, okay, I don't know if anybody here is a skier. And everybody remember the uh, old airport in Hibbing? All right, those are monstrosities. I mean, you got skiers, my little daughter skis and everything else. You design a ski place and you walk downstairs in stiff boots. You're like seeing people fall and everything else. You got Hibbing's airport, you used to be able to look out, watch planes and everything else. Now this design of this school, I think it should be a lot of input from, before you approve this, I think there should be a lot of public input and structures that are a little model of how the school is going up here. There will be. There will be. There will be. There will be. Not join us. I don't. I, please, please join us. The problem is, please join us. There's, we've had some meetings. We've had some site meetings. We've had building meetings. The thing is, right now, we have to pass this before we decide on the final product. And those will be community meetings. Okay. I didn't read that in the I, 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 I just got a couple yeah, of things. Read that in another brochure and say, input the design of the future. Yeah. I've got just a couple of questions that I want everybody to hear answered first before we go any further, because I know these were burning questions on social media today. Why was the land not bought yet? Um, well, 
when you need the money to buy the land, number one. Right? Exactly. Um, that's probably the number one reason. In a lot of districts, elect not to buy the land before the referendum because they don't want to lose negotiation rights, right? As soon as you pick a land, now you have some opportunities with the city, which are really neat, uh, and some great opportunities on some sites. So there's, there's a number of reasons, but I've worked on many referendums <coughs> where there's three different sites that might be picked. Normally you do it for negotiations, right? And then after referendum passed, there'll be a lot of other tests done on the property where we believe the schools are gonna go between soil borings and wetland delineations and a lot of a lot more homework done. But the disadvantage school districts have is they don't have money in the kitty to pay for those tests until a referendum passed. And then a lot more exhaustive tests will be done to make the final determination, even though we think we have a pretty good idea. <coughs> Did I answer it the long way? That's one of the <laughs> No. One of the other statements was there's not enough land and it's built on it. It's going to be built on a swamp. And in all of the meetings that I've gone to, I keep looking at the map here. There's 52 acres to build the high school. Is that enough land to build the high school and everything else? Yes. The model has been tested and laid out on a where potentially the high school will be located with proper parking and proper play fields. Yes, that would be sufficient. Okay, cost overruns. That always happen. Is there gonna be cost overruns? In, in, in the budget sheets you have in the review and comment and the detailed sheets we have, there is a contingency that the Minnesota Department of Ed that highly recommends we put into the budgets. Anywhere from three to 5% depending on the size of the job. You base it on our experience throughout the industry, not just buildings we have built, but others have built, um, to look at what the budget should be. You then have a contingency for unforeseen conditions. For example, there may be soil corrections or other things that pop up. There, there is no more money. We have to live within our means of the referendum, and we have to make it work. And that's one of our main jobs in pre-construction is to work with the design team and I'll just put so things don't get gold plated, okay? We want a really nice building, but it, um, and make sure it comes in on budget on good day, because the dollars are the dollars, there are no more. You can't go, we can't go back to the well. But can you explain to the public why a letter of intent was filed by both districts to purchase those properties? Um, well, I think there were some, well, one, a letter, <coughs> I don't know the exact reason why, maybe you guys want to answer it, but um, one, it gets the process rolling, right? Because when the referendum passes, there's a lot of work to get done. So there's red tape, so to speak, that it would be nice to get out of the way and keep the ball rolling. I think the cost of the piece of the property you are looking at, I, I think are favorable, um, but there's no sale done until after the referendum. You wouldn't buy, it. yeah. You wouldn't buy a piece of land. It's just what you're basically doing is you're expressing interest to, to the buy. owner is to buy it. Yeah. There's no so for there. some reason, if you're pitching this piece of property, okay, that says you want to build here and it's up for sale, that the city wouldn't sell it out from underneath you. That's very between good point. between the point of between the point of interest until the point of when the referendum passes or doesn't pass, the results of the referendum. Right, it can give yeah. you a first rate of refusal. Correct. Gives you the opportunity to let you know you're interested, but no purchase of me, it's just a so intent. So the word of a non-binding contract is, that's always, it's been asked time and time again. In other words, we're not obligated financially by no means to the city if whatever happens to the referendum, if it doesn't pass or it passes, we're not obligated financially if it doesn't pass, but if it passes, that's when that's when we can start negotiating that piece of property. Correct. Um, there's no federal money in this project, right? Correct. Okay. That was brought up on uh, some of the letters. Um, cost overruns we talked about. Um, I would would like to uh, ask the superintendents. Uh, I know that this has been brought up before. Uh, Hibbing. Um, has started an academy program, uh, but they have only six, I believe, academies. Or Hibbing six. has, yes, Hibbing has, and that was come up. Hibbing has started, 
become a sliver of the career academies. And this goes way back to the both school boards. This was well over a year and a half ago when this came up. One of the early discussions was we were talking about different ways that we could structure things. And we didn't want to create a school that was good for some kids, but not good for the other kids. So the school boards very early on, I think both school boards, you were both really clear on this, that you didn't want programs that was good for some kids, oh, it'd be great for these kids, and then the rest of the kids were just kind of like, well, figure it out as well as you can. So that's part on the Virginia and the Upper Gilbert Career Academy, we're talking about tracks and pathways for all of the kids. Hibbing is doing a small sliver. They are not doing it with their entire student body. This is significantly different than what Hibbing is. It's not even, they're not even comparable. The other it's thing a huge I, difference. One other thing <coughs> is that Hibbing didn't do any, per se, uh, structural changes. Um, one of the things that I know for sure, they can't do structural changes. They're building because it's on the National Register of Historic Buildings and they get federal money to keep that building the way it is. So, Alyssa. Is my information correct in that Hibbing is also not even changing the course catalog? That's what I had heard, but I don't know if that's accurate or not. The, um, that, they're, that they're, maybe their terminology is changing, but the courses offered are pretty much staying the same. Right. And that would be a very big difference. From what and there's only 140 doing. kids out of the whole school doing that. What's their student population in Hibbing? They're about 2,400 right now. Okay. About the and size. Us together wouldn't be. About 2,400. <coughs> One of the other things that I wanted to bring out real quick is that we've heard this comment about the uh, elementary school being one building. That would make us have the largest elementary school in the state of Minnesota. Pre K through six. That would be the largest. Okay. That includes. I went through all of the school districts in the state. There's only 10 that are 1,000 students or more, and we'd have almost 1,400. Plus the transportation. Plus the transportation. Mr. Speltz, you had a question? Maria, talking about that, I, I've heard that too. Why can Giving do it by themselves? Which we've now learned they're not doing the same thing by themselves, which shouldn't all avoid that. But why Giving can do it by themselves in even before we learned that was because they had enough kids it's that simple they have 660 high school kids so they could if they were doing a plan like us which they aren't well why can't we we don't have enough kids as a single entity so comparing us to hibbing and what they're doing isn't even close because they have enough kids but they're not even doing it but that's why we couldn't. That's why we couldn't. There weren't enough kids as Evelyn Gilbert to do their own and Virginia to do their own. There weren't enough kids when you compare to what we thought and just found out Hibbing's not doing. Mr. Zalman? Yes. Evelyn and Gilbert are poor communities. Can you guarantee me that when these buildings don't sell, that that money's going to be there to demo those buildings? Because Evelyn and Gilbert cannot afford to pay that. That money is built into the budget already. Yeah. Is it going to be there? Are we going to spend it someplace else? Because if those buildings don't sell, and, and, and excuse me, that's a residential area. And the other thing is, Virginia has got it all planned out. The buildings are coming down. We're going to build New Roosevelt there. Evelyn sits there with these buildings and Gilbert, and all of a sudden the good neighbors in those two communities what are they going to get stuck with? Can you imagine? I can. It's not going to be a veteran's home. Can you guys elaborate on that? Can you guys elaborate on that a little bit? Or on, uh, <coughs> on that question. He's asking if uh, the demo that's in the budget, if, what happens if that's not there when it comes time with the demo? Uh, well, it'll be put in there's, there's a line yeah. item right in the review and comment of $7.4 million and change for demolition. And it'd be my recommendation you don't touch those dollars um, until we know better. And I, ideally, um, again, everything is publicly bid and we'll bid those projects and it'll come in less than that. And those dollars then can go back towards whatever the book school board wants to use for. Um, Lori, Lori, Lori. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just wanted to talk um, to this gentleman a little bit about 
the 80s because um, I graduated in the 80s, my husband did it. And yeah, it was bad when those mines went down. We had to move away because there wasn't a job to be found. And the, the academies is exactly <coughs> the, the, combat, the combat to that. Because yes, we're about mining here, but we can't only be about mining because then we are, their ebb and flow affects lives and people lose homes. So the academy is designed to grow the rest of the economy, the other businesses in the area to keep the, the kids here so that we're not dependent on just the mines. We, we have to stop thinking about the mines as our, as our only thing in our economy. And the, the academies are designed to do that, to train kids to do other things, to bring businesses in because we have the workforce that they want. Um, we have businesses here that are soon going to leave because they, they can't get workers here. They're putting ads in papers in Chicago and in the Twin Cities because there's nobody here trained to do those jobs. Why would those businesses, why would they stay here year after year with no workforce? So we have to stop thinking about that. And then the comment about the one school for elementary, um, you, have, you have to realize when you're dealing with young children in elementary, um, to get them to cooperate and become citizens and become to be, feel like they are part of the school community, it has to be small. When you want to talk about anti-bullying programs, the kids need to know each other. The teachers need to know. I, I can go through the school right now, and I know all the kids, and then all the kids know me. You put that many elementary kids together, you lose that ability to make those connections and those relationships. And those are things that when they get into junior high and high school, those are the things that keep kids in school. They've got connections to adults. They've got connections to their classmates. And that, that wouldn't happen if we put them all in one large element. Um, I just want to say one thing, and I apologize. I, I have to leave by 6.30. Um, I have another com commitment. The, we're all talking about certain things here, though I, we're not missing the subject, but we're all running around it. This is about education. This is about education on the Iron Range where, well, you talked about the 80s, I'm from the 70s, so I'm really old. But the thing is back when our grandparents came here and immigrants came here, they held education as one of the highest things. During the depressions, they continued to build schools and send their kids to school. And I think we have to quit being selfish in the fact of shortchanging the kids nowadays. Yes, they're beautiful buildings on the outside. They're, they're not functional. They, both schools together spend two and a half million dollars just on upkeep. So I think what we have to do here tonight and next week when we go to the polls is think about education and do we want to continue what our forefathers and mothers held dearly. Thank you. Mine is more or less a comment, um, piggybacking. On, we've heard from a lot of teachers today, and I think that's very important because I'm hearing loud and clear what they're saying that they need. And I will also piggyback off of um, Kelly's earlier statements as well. This is this, These are just two things that I want to remind <coughs> some citizens of. In the recent years, in the recent last couple of years, just two things that pop into my head that we are not providing for our teachers and for our students. Um, you know, we have no track. Our school district doesn't have a track. So we are utilizing Virginia's track. Um, the football field, the, they kick the football and the football goes over the fence and you gotta have a kid out there to throw back the football. Um, also in the last few years, yeah, and also in the last few years, or I think it was last year actually, um, the music department came to our to our meeting and said that they 
they were not being cut. The music department necessarily didn't get cut, but they were being stretched thin and they weren't able to have um, individual vocal lessons and things that they had done in the past. And they were begging us to allow them to have that opportunity. So those are two big things that, you know, have come up in the last couple of years that we're not providing what is needed to our students and to our teachers. Teachers have also stated many times about spending their money out of their own budgets, out of their own pockets to provide for our students. And I understand, I mean, I understand they want to get those things and whatever, but they shouldn't have to be paying out of their own budget for things that we could and should be providing. So I just want to remind people of, of those just couple, you know, couple of things that in the last couple of years have come up in our school district. In Virginia, people comment pretty soon. I believe we have All right. two, just checking. Two, what? You, sir, you have not spoken yet. Oh, oh. I'm an old guy. But I'm interested in education. I'm interested in uh, what we what I've been reading about 21st century. Now, you all got your stories. I got my story too. Uh, I'm an electrical engineer. I practiced in the 21st century, and I went to the University of Minnesota. I graduated in ecological forestry uh, just after I retired. So I, I've been, I taught project-based learning courses to kids. Uh, I've taken project-based learning at the University of Minnesota, and I like it. <laughs> uh, but, but I caution you. Too much of that can be detrimental. I, th I think it's, yeah, it's it's not the real efficient way of learning. Uh, it takes it takes a lot of time. Uh, it's the, your projects have to be designed for the people. Um, I've talked a little bit with uh, Dr. Schmidt in one of the meetings, and uh, our discussion was. Um, we're on the scale. Uh, we got uh, traditional education. The University of Minnesota is pretty much traditional education. Most of the schools in Minnesota, for my see, are traditional education. These there's some experimental schools like Alexandria. I think Bemidji is one. Shakopee are going to uh, uh, project-based learning. Uh, these are just a few. Right, is this going to work? I, you know, this is experimental. I, I don't know. Am I wrong on that? I, uh, uh, I believe there's more than three in the state. There it could be more, yeah. but but the bulk of them are traditional. And I don't I don't think I'm reading that traditional is only memorization. Well, I don't know. When, when I'm doing my math problems at the end of the chapter, my physics problems, memorization doesn't work. Um, it's, you pretty much have to think it out. So my concern is how much are we gonna go slide that scale over to project-based learning or uh, traditional learning? Are, are, are the kids, are they gonna uh, be able to function without taking remedial courses at the U? Uh, project-based uh, learning is good in fact it's a good motivator that's what i think so i, I bring that out oh, sir i just would like to to uh to thank you for your story and just to elaborate on that the reason why i spoke of flexibility earlier is the the flexibility that the, the new school would have would be able to create spaces for project-based learning and then you would also still have your traditional tracking courses as well so you need to be able to, to flex between both of those um, as the kids need to see fit. Okay, but now how much do we have, does the architect have to take, how much money do we have to spend on special rooms or whatever? I think, I think one of the answers is you've got this the sliding uh, walls. Right, that you, you can, you can fun. But a lot of what I found is uh, most everything is done on a computer now. 
So you're looking at computer aided design, or you can uh, you can uh, do your uh, project based learning on a model on a computer. You, you, computer doesn't take. You can put a lot of computers in a room like this, and once we get artificial intelligence, I mean, people are going to be at computers. Uh, you're going to. Uh, I suppose you can do a physics experiment and you can have a great big ball that you roll in a, into a room and look at the friction or whatever, but do you really have to do that? You can, you can design your project-based learning to not take uh, so much room or, uh, in a building. And that's where the flexibility comes in, okay. to be able to create smaller spaces, larger spaces, however the educational direction or the teacher sees fit. Yeah. I have one quick question, or a comment and then a question. Um, the question I have is, has anybody asked, I don't know if the board has um, taken a, a survey or talked to students at all, the students who are going to be affected by this to see how they feel about it because that's really who this is about. They will be impacted the most. Um, you know, progressive learning or being kind of stuck where, you know, where they are now and not forward thinking. Um, and my other comment was, I, I think we all know that technology has changed the way we do everything, including teaching and learning and we can't be afraid of that you know when people come we, this is a mining area but as we know with the cuts and such you can make produce as much iron ore with half the people because everything is automated so we have to look for other ways of livelihoods here the medical community and teaching are the two other industries that we have up here. So when somebody moves here, when a doctor comes here, the doctor will go visit with the hospital employees, the hospital staff, and the other parent, mom or dad, the first thing they look at is a school. So if they go to a school that is falling apart, or if they're moving from an area that is advance and then they come here and they look around it's not going to be a place that they want to move to if they're going to go backwards instead of forwards to answer your first question i think we would like to go to mr caddy mr caddy's done a lot of the work with students mm -hmm. and how they feel about this i know that at least in the virginia district i would ask andy to stand up with me sure. together yeah. andy i'm sorry yeah, no, that's okay. <laughs> Our our experience is we've brought lots of students to Alexandria, and we've had those those students look at the academy model, and the fact is they're excited. Mm -hmm. We brought the kids to Alexandria, and they saw in the kids from Alexandria the engagement throughout the building. And I can't even that is not something that I ever anticipated going to Alexandria. But our kids got off the bus and they're, did you see them? Even when they're in the hallways, they're doing their work. Mm -hmm. And when you're talking about project-based learning and the environment in the classrooms, the fact that from my classroom, I can sit and observe my kids in the room working on a project and I have kids that need to, a silent space where they can go and work on a project. I don't have to imagine what they're doing because they're outside of my room and I can't see them. I can see them outside of my room in other pods of small learning areas that are visible from my classroom. As a teacher, we have kids that are, we're trying to do a balance between project-based learning and traditional learning. We're trying to do it. We're doing our best in the buildings that we have. They don't meet our needs. We can't observe our kids. But when we went, when we were going to Alexandria, if you ever have an opportunity to see a school like that, from the classroom, I can see my kids engaged, whether they're right in front of me in my room or just outside of my room in a small room where they have the ability to work in groups or to do a recording where I'm not just assuming they're in the hallway and they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. The facility functions to support the learning. And the question was about kids and every single kid that came back 
And this, when we surveyed them, not one of them said that they weren't excited about this. Mm -hmm. They've been yeah, passionate about it. They've been at our meetings. And the kids see this as hope. And that's what this is to a lot of our teachers. They've come back and they've talked to us. Many of us have been sitting in the classrooms with these kids. Well, and it, they're inspired. It's, ex it's exciting to see kids get excited about their own education. Because we just don't see that enough where kids are excited to go to school. They're excited of the project that they're working on, or it, it doesn't have to be just project-based. It can be project-based traditional. There's a, there's a healthy balance, I think, to your question earlier. But to see kids excited and to see some of the older students, I mean, yeah, 11 and 12 year olds, are we gonna trust their opinion of, well, they see a shiny penny, they're excited about it. It wasn't just that. It was that the older kids who took us on tours and some of our older students who had gone said, I wish I was younger and I wish I could go through a mm -hmm. high school like this. I'm graduating this year, but I wish I had these opportunities. And, and to talk to college students who've done some research, who've gone to college now and had a couple years of college under their belt, they come back and tell us the same thing. They wish they had these opportunities and they are excited for the future and they're excited for their younger brothers, their younger sisters, their cousins, things like that. So to see excitement out of kids when you say school, that's, that's worth it. We'll have one final comment on the upload side. And this will go to the Virginia side. Quick, but um, Bolt Tech, I was an instructor for eight years. They had the very best uh, instrumentation program in the United States, second to no one. They had the very best robotics program in the United States, second to no one. They had so many good programs, as it, and about 20 years ago, oh, excuse me, sir. Oh, you can't uh, hear me. <laughs> <laughs> about 20 years ago, I think it was Mr. Ed Roos was the president of the college at that time. He retired, and the person that took over changed the curriculum and watered it down so bad that I saw uh, offers from uh, com companies all over the world were coming in. Those students were getting placed before they even finished the first year of a two-year program. It was that good. When they watered that program down, they dropped almost 70%. Now, this new academy, which I'm all for, as far as uh, if it's gonna be vocational, that's gonna be the thing of the future. But how does that affect Eveleth Bull Tech? Will they go out of business? And the other thing is the land that they're talking about building on, I don't know if you've checked with any of the utility companies, but even put a power pole in that ground up there, they have to drill and blast because it's solid granite. It's a mountain. And all of Midway is like that, and around that college is like that. So we just built a bridge across the mining pit. I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, not to, not to be. No, I mean, I just, I just don't think that's really. Oh, but, you, but, you, you, you were the dean at a college when, okay. when the, that but, change was made. I know who was, but uh, I left there. It's been 20 years since I've been there, but uh, I'm saying they had the very best school in the United States. And I worked in a power plant that know about instrumentation and stuff like that. And the guys that come out of the guys and gals that come out of that classes, especially <coughs> instrumentation robotics, was the very best. Now they're not getting the job offers. So that's what we're trying to achieve, I guess, with this academy. Okay. Um, Virginia. Mr. Canal. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Nelson, you asked about the kids, and I'm going to get emotional because this is I'm very passionate about this, and. Uh, how many of you were at the uh, miners' meetings when we had uh, with the architects, with uh, AIG, Cunningham? Okay, your kids were unbelievable at those two meetings. They were they were unbelievable. That's your kids. Your kids love this idea. Mm -hmm. And if you could have seen them working with adults and taking charge with adults, I mean, we just sat back and was like, you go. <laughs> <laughs> and their imaginations ran wild. Some not realistic. <laughs> okay, they want to have parking garages under the school. I mean, that's not realistic. We get that. But my God, your, your, your children, your grandchildren, our future, 
they were amazing. Let them be amazing. <coughs> we love this. this is nice. I have a question of all of the, just the board members. How many of the board members, were, raise your hand, have been to Alexandria? I think I was first, right? You were all no, the first. Well, I want to ask the same question to the audience. How many have been to Alexandria? Not the entire group here. How many people found anything that wasn't favorable? Couldn't find a comment. Everyone that's been to Alexandria loved the place. You, you almost had to see it to appreciate it. I'm surprised you didn't. The shop was, well, actually, the shop was too small. It was. <laughs> yeah. And that's one shop. of the lessons we learned. We yeah, yeah, the shop about, was way too before, small. Well, how we don't need new buildings. I and this fellow here were part of co-location, which happened four or five years ago. <clears throat> five years ago. And we were both in favor of saving our old buildings. But five years later, our buildings have deteriorated so bad, we can't sleep anymore. Virginia is looking at $14 million just to plumb it. We have wiring that I found that was bare in the building over the years. Um, it, it's, a, it's a crime that our kids are going to school in that building. And I have a question of Mr. Spells who's here. Something we have a major problem in our school with. We can't feed our kids in a cafeteria that won't accommodate can't find the kids. Really, tell them how, how, how much fun it is. You start at what time to feed lunch? Yeah. Gilbert too. Junior and I asked to start at about 10 to 10 to 11 and then they have to get out of there for us and then the senior and I comes in and then they have to get out of there for us and then we go all the way to 115 and there's not enough room and we're trampling over well over two blocks through buildings past classrooms past <coughs> high school kids and the worst part Tom is look at my playground yeah. Yeah. you want kids to play you want kids to run I'm hollering, watch out for the fence! <laughs> it's unbelievable. So the inefficiencies of where we are at is horrible. How many of the parents here know that the high school students are not accommodated in our cafeteria? They sit in the quarters on every floor. They're in, you know, try walking through our annex at lunch hour. There's a path about this wide with feet coming up, but they have nowhere else to go. Our kids eat lunch in the hallway, sitting on the floor with the steam beetles. Okay. Wait one second, please. Sorry, I have to leave. I promised my daughter I would make it to a band concert for the first time this year because I'm usually busy with this stuff. So thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I, I just wanted to comment about the, the colleges and about, you know, um, we're not trying to keep people from going to college and trying to just we're just trying to give them exposure. We're trying to give them the opportunity to see what different careers could offer for them, what they're interested in, because right now they're not getting a lot of that. So they're going out and, you know, I was one of those kids that third year in college, I changed my major. If we give kids exposure now to the different career careers that are out there for them, they have a better idea of what their interests are and they'll have a, hopefully, spend less money trying to figure that out when they're in college. In my vision, my vision would be that I would hope we could work with those colleges and those Votechs to, to really be able to provide that educational oomph that we need to, to get our kids prepared for their futures. So to answer your question, there's still going to be kids going PSEO, there is still that opportunity for kids. We're not taking that opportunity away. We're, we're giving them exposure. And from what I've heard from kids that have gone to Alexandria or, or come to our collaboration meetings, they are telling us that they are not getting that exposure and they want it. So just to answer the gentleman's Another question. comment from the Virginia side. Um, my name is Matt Craig. I'm the choir director for Virginia High School. Um, I'm not from here. I've lived here for the last 11 years. Um, but I think, second to maybe a few teachers, I think I can safely say that I spend uh, probably more time in our school than a lot of our, our staff do. 
And I served on the facilities committee uh, all through last fall as well and went to every meeting and worked really hard with the team to, to come up with these plans for the buildings that, that, we, that we have to vote on. Um, one thing that I've heard a lot as an educator is the phrase structures dictates behaviors. Meaning if we give ourselves, our students, our people, our community, a structure that shows them high quality work, that shows them organization, that shows them all these things that we really want our kids to grow up and learn, that they will follow suit and that they will they'll behave that way and they will do the things that we want um, and that we want them to learn. As an educator, it's a constant battle day in and day out with the kids about, you know, discipline issues, behavior issues. And I think it's safe to say, I've never been to Alexandria, but I think a lot of people that have gone back to Alexandria have said that they don't really deal with that a lot because the kids are happy to be at school. I talked to the seventh grader just a couple days ago, actually, in my seventh grade choir of 90 students in a room that's not made for 90 students. Um, and and he, I was trying to get them excited for a Monday morning choir rehearsal, which is hard to do. And he said, I hate school. And everybody else said, yeah, I hate school. And I took a pause and I said, tell me why. Or what would make it better, I think was the question that I asked. Because that's what we want. We want our, our students to enjoy school. And he said, he kind of gave me like a halfway answer, kind of what he thought I wanted to hear. And I took it and I walked away. And then I heard him say, well, maybe if I got to learn about things I actually cared about. Mm -hmm. And that's when I turned around and I said, I think that's a great idea. You know, and, and I, think, I think we are trying to give our students this opportunity to find what they're passionate about versus saying, you have to take seventh grade math, you have to take seventh grade English, you have to take seventh grade history, you have to take seventh grade academic. We're trying to give them a chance to say, I'm really interested in this. I don't know if I want to do it for the rest of my life, but I'm interested enough in this to say, I want to take a bunch of classes in the performing arts, or I want to take a bunch of classes in the health and human services. And if we can give them that structure, then the behavior will follow. <coughs> there, are, there are some kids in our school that walk into our school and they do not see daylight for the entire seven hours they're there. And I'm not even being sarcastic, I'm telling you the truth. They don't have windows in their classrooms, some of them, to even see outside. That's not a learning place. That's not a place where quality learning can happen. That's not a place where kids enjoy going to school. Um, and in terms of the buildings, I mean, the facilities committee, we really did do a lot of work looking at the buildings and saying, you know, are these buildings, can we remodel them? Well, yeah, of course we can. But can we remodel them to do what we want to do, to change the path? And the answer to that question was no. And, and I mean, many board members and people in this room were on that facility committee, and we taught, we hashed that question out a lot. And it was not just a blanket like, yes, we're building new, we're not even gonna talk about rebuilding or renovating. I mean, we really did talk about renovating a lot. So we didn't just walk into this and say, we're building new, we don't care what the old buildings are like. Um, so that's just kind of my two cents, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got this one thing I wanna add for you. <laughs> Principal and I knew him when he was talking this way. I graduated in Virginia in 1957. I'll be 80 years old in August. The one thing that he forgot to mention is, and I learned this from the superintendent, if you want to go to the cafeteria, get a GPS. <laughs> you can't find it. I was at a, base, a basketball game in the new gym. And I went to school there, graduated. 1989, in. the new gym. That's a Virginia, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. a Virginia thing. Yes. And I went, I wanted to watch another game in the old gym where I went when I was there. So I left the front, this end, the north end of the building, knowing I would get right there. Mm -hmm. Half an hour before <laughs> I finally got where the other gym was, the game was over. And I didn't want to go back to that maze to get over here. I went outside, went all the way around the building and came in. We need a new building in this town. No doubt about it. And I am bent to the first meetings and I'll be here at the last meetings. You people have to give up your own little ideas. You gotta do this for the kids. They're the ones that are gonna benefit. You aren't, whether you have property or whether you have a house or whatever you got, you ain't gonna gain nothing, but those kids will. So do it for the kids, get off your high horse, help the kids. <laughs> Thank you. Um, 
I come at this from two perspectives. One, I was a Virginia school employee for 23 years until I was I was a special ed paraprofessional. I have worked in Parkview, which always had walls. <laughs> and you. being in a nice, newer facility is so good for everybody that's there. You take pride in the place you are in. It's easier to do everything in a facility that's meant for educating our kids. I've worked in the, the Roosevelt and the, the high school areas. And to get a student in a wheelchair from Roosevelt over to the gym in, you know, in the, the new gym, as we call it, was, is a logistical nightmare. And it involves ramps and elevators and, you know, I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous. It needs to be, we need better for our students. My other perspective is, I, I am a graduate of Virginia, as was my father, as is my 100-year-old grandmother who went to school in Roosevelt High School. My kids, all four of my children graduated from Virginia starting in 2000, ending in 2008. They all went off to college. Three, all four of them went to private colleges. Um, three of them graduated and have gone on to be successful, but all of them said, holy cow, the, the roommates that came in from other parts of the, the cities and the, the other parts of the state, the experiences that they had access to that our kids didn't even know about, the classes that they got to go to, it, it was just such an eye-opener. My fourth child started out at a private college, and we knew that wasn't going to be the right fit for him, but he, he was always meant to be a tradesperson. But at the time he graduated, there were not very many trades classes available. And frankly, the kids that, that went into the shops classes were kind of the losery kids, you know, the, the flannel shirters, the gear heads, the whatever. They, they weren't as respected. So long story short, he dropped out of school, $15,000 in student loans on parents later, yeah. he went to Dunwoody, and in 18 months came out with a CNC machinist certificate. He has never, ever lacked for a job, and now he is working in Hibbing making $27 an hour being a CNC machinist. And as he was working at one place, the other place was contacting him, headhunting him. Now he's at that place, and two other places are headhunting him because there aren't enough CNC machinists. If he had had an ability while in high school to be exposed to trades and that kind of stuff, it would have saved his parents a whole boatload of money. <laughs> and he would have been off and running that much earlier. So I, I just don't see how we deny our children these opportunities. Thanks. Yeah. I've been listening, and I, I'm a Gilbert graduate, born and raised. Went to kindergarten in Gilbert. Graduated from Gilbert. My first job, I was hired by Eveleth. <laughs> the next year, we consolidated, or paired and shared, as we called it. It was awful. It was hard. It was fighting. It was arguing. I've been with Eveleth Gilbert for 36 years. I'm still the track coach with no track. And back years ago, Eveleth, Virginia said, well, you can come and train on our track. And I was, mm, no way. Uh -uh. <laughs> my kids might open and roll to Virginia and all the them. <laughs> we do have, I don't know if you realize this, but we do have 200 Elvis Gilbert students that have opened and rolled to Virginia. We've lost. And I talk to my track team every day for the last years. And I'm just talking sports because that's who I am. 
can't get that out of me. I'm a competitor. I want to win, but I want kids to succeed. And when I talk to all the students that I can in Aveleth Gilbert, they are so excited to go with Virginia. And 10 years, 15 years ago, oh my gosh, that would never have happened. And how wonderful, wonderful it would be to see this happen, to not only bring great education, which is our number one job. I'm an old per older person. <laughs> I'm retired. I'm not gonna be here forever. I'm gonna die, but I wanna leave a, leave a legacy. I want, I don't even have, grand, I have one grandchild here, but it's not for her, it's not for, it's for, we as adults are supposed to be the people that make it better for the next generations. We, not kids, not 20 year olds, but we are supposed to be smart and we are supposed to do what's right for these kids. And then when we go on to our next world, we know we've done everything we can to make this world better. That's how I was raised. That's how I was raised. My mom and dad raised me. If change is needed, change is needed. And I can see this academy. I know Minneapolis people are looking at this like crazy. I have relatives that live down there. They said, did it pass yet? Is it passed yet? I know educators in colleges are kids going into education right now. Did it pass yet? Did it pass yet? Because I want to come up and teach there. I will tell you, up here on the range sometimes, and I've been, like I said, with Evelyn Gilbert for 36 wonderful, proud years. I'm proud. I'm a proud Golden Bear. I'm a proud Buccaneer, but I will be a proud whatever the next name is. Doesn't matter. I know when in Gilbert, in Evelyn, we had a lot of teachers that would come to our school and it would just be a stepping stone. I remember being on a, a committee to hire my new position. Uh, oh, I was tough on that one. <laughs> Someone's gonna take my spot. We had a gentleman that, we, he was awesome on his interview, just awesome. And we wanted him. And he walked through our halls in Gilbert. He said, this is all I have to work with for physical education. I said, yeah, we do our best. I'm always a positive person. We do our best. I try to do my best. Because, oh, no. Because they're taught in college to have all these things to bring to kids. That's how they graduate today. You know, yes, there are some people that want to go to small schools and they're fine. And I, 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 oh, they're awesome too. Everybody is awesome. We as adults have to make those good choices for the next generations. It's our responsibility. Thank you to this school board in getting it through. It's time. Five years ago, maybe it wasn't time. Maybe it should have happened with Mountain Iron, Evelyn Gilbert, Virginia, the whole bit, you know? Maybe it should have happened. But we can't keep looking backwards. We gotta look forwards. We have wonderful educators that are ready to just take off and give these kids what they need. Please, please think about the kids. Please think about the pride that this is gonna to bring to the Iron Range. The Iron Range, and I think we build, they will come. How am I going to follow her? <laughs> but uh, my question is, I, I, I was watching this process from afar, uh, and I saw that they were going to build the, the new uh, elementary school, was going to stay in the, the campus in Eveleth. I said, oh, that's pretty good. The next week I left, it's gone out to the rock. Uh, you no, know, we got... Uh, I went, in, I went on Google and I counted the number of homes within a five block area of, of the school. And I counted 760 homes uh, within five blocks of the Franklin School. Now, this means people have the opportunity to buy, families can have the opportunity to buy homes in that area 
so their kids can walk. They're close to the schools have playgrounds they can use that on. To, uh, there's meetings uh, uh, after school, uh, and and it's part of the community. Now, when you go out on the road way out in the edge of town, that's really not part of the community. So I'm I'm just kind of wondering uh, why not have the school. On, on this uh, campus, a beautiful campus, uh, you know, what's going to happen, uh, it's going to be 21 acres, it's just going to demolish all the buildings. We're going to demolish all the buildings in Gilbert, but this will leave a big hole in the community. The, the school will be out there. Uh, so I guess my question is, do we really have to do that? Why, why don't we just, why don't we have a school right on the campus? So like, is it big enough? Talk about, I guess people walking to school in Neville, but you forgot another town that's just to the east. Gilbert. What about Gilbert? Well, well, people have to walk off to school. Well, well, Virginia, they'll have a school in town. Well, Virginia has a school. Why did they put that in the same footprint? Is that Ask me how many people walk to school in Virginia. Thank you. Okay, but you're, you're giving they can. everybody they can. You're giving everybody a walk. chance to be fair to uh, you're giving them a chance to uh, be close to a school. You're giving the, the community, it's part of the community. We're going to have a big hole there in Evelyn. Uh, for the past hundred years we've had, uh, the, the area has been occupied. So we got to do something. I mean, are we going to let it go to, who's going to own it? I mean, is it going to be just go to weeds or uh, after we, uh, uh, I'd, I'd say, you know, we want to we want to build these, keep these towns together too. We we can have both. We can have things that are perfect for kids, and we can have things that are good for the community too. So that's just my. Yeah. I just want to address that because we did, you know, initially when we when we were thinking about where to do the elementary, um, we we do love the site where the school is in in Amlet. Um, it's beautiful, but you start thinking about what, what do you do with the children while you remodel? So do we wait till the academies are done so the high school kids are gone? That's three years. So that we can move our elementary kids into the high school that's now empty while we tear down the current building. And how long does that take? A couple of years and then we move them back. So we've got several years of moving kids around and working in non-ideal spaces. Um, and the people that are going to the school are the students. So it doesn't really matter where the school is. The kids are not walking to school. Um, the parents aren't coming into the school. Um, so to, to say that the community is losing because that building isn't there, the community is not currently losing it anyway. With the new facility um, and, and the design of it is designed to be more of a community draw with some amenities that the community mm -hmm. will use. Because right now, this, the only people entering the building are teachers and students, and they're not walking. Uh, they don't um, walk. How is Virginia doing theirs? Are you they're they're staying on the same site, is that true? They are. How, how are they uh, accommodating this, where we can't? Their students, are. I, I would imagine, are going to have a harder time mm -hmm. in the transition. OK, but I'm saying, let's go through that. Let's put the school where it belongs, right in the city. Well, it's also like, a compromise between the two, two cities, I think. Yes. I'd just like because, to say as a board member that there were lots of meetings of people from all the communities, and this was the recommendation that came out of that. This isn't something that the board is, is putting upon the communities. This is something that is coming right from the communities. These groups, which has consisted of board, um, board members, business members, parents, teachers, and this is the recommendation that has come to us from that, and that is what we are trying to build upon as board members. So um, I would just like that to kind of be at the forefront of everything. We have had over 100 meetings of a wide cross-section of both, of all of the communities, and this is what has been brought to the top. Will you be a meeting of question here? Uh, uh, I, I saw it in the advertisement for the school like, uh, with, this was by moving the school to be closer to Gilbert. Yeah. Okay, I, I went out and rode from 
Gilbert to the Franklin School and Gilbert to the new school site, same thing. It's, it's closer as the coal fries, but the, the, the people don't, don't fly by helicopters to go on that. Wait, did you, I mean, and I'm not, this is not being snarky, but did you go to any of these meetings where they talked about the elementary schools? Because I, I would imagine well, that there was a lot of discussion well, and a lot of this was, was covered in those meetings. Was, I, I saw it, it was in the paper that it was gonna be, they were gonna save the site at the Franklin School. Well, then, I, I said, well, why should I go to a meeting? It's okay. Okay, then the next, there, there was hardly any meetings afterwards. It just uh, popped up. No, that's that's a misinformation. Oh, okay, well, I, 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 in my, the way I was following it, that's that's what I said. But well, I'm saying that they were this, it was the same, same distance. January 24th, there was an ad in the neighbor or days before that, and there was over almost 70 people at the Eveleth Resource Center where this group met and at that time it deemed that there had to be there should be two new elementary schools instead of re <coughs> there, instead of redoing these buildings okay, but that was at that time excuse me but my my point is the location of the school the new school I'm saying that the school, as it is on the map, it's the same distance from Gilbert to the school as it is to the Franklin School. So to, to, you, you can go and ride. I guess, I guess that having the elementary within close proximity to the high school would be, that's the benefit. Okay. So that, you know, I mean, well, now we're busing kids all over the place. I mean, it's a bit, we're busing kids from Gilbert, we're, you know, we're busing kids from Eveleth. I mean, for, I mean, the opportunity for, to use the pool right for the sake of efficiency virginia. virginia huh virginia kept the same site that's the virginia sport to discuss i guess i mean well, I'm on I, I, I guess i'm i'm not trying to be argument mm -hmm. but, uh, mm -hmm. I, I would take a second look at that i i, I know the schools is too far out it, it should be in, should be where uh, in the footprint where it, where it is and, and, and yeah you know, you could build a school right next to the Franklin School on a piece of property that's vacant. The same way Virginia's going to build their new elementary school on that same footprint that they're on right now. Maybe over to the side after they knock the high school down first or whatever. But the Evelyn people and Gilbert people know better than this. This is a silent majority that will speak on May 14th. I will guarantee you that. But if we, if we, and you know what they'll tell you? No. But if this is and that's why they weren't interested in your survey, that 82%, because guess what? They already know what they're gonna say. So no, we, we can't bring, afford it. But if we bring this to the vote, which we are, we, 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 the, the board's decided to move forward with this, and moving <coughs> forward was to build two new elementaries and one new high school at the sites that were chosen. Now, if we all of a sudden bring it to the voters and all of a sudden now we're changing up, now it's it's truly a bait and switch. Is that what you're saying? We should bait and switch this? I don't, I would, I, no, I'm not for that. I'm not gonna bait and switch nothing. It's either, it's site B and site A. Well, guess okay. what, I lived in Midway. I can tell you a lot about that area mm -hmm. because as a child, I hunted and trapped that area. I've walked every inch of that. You're gonna have water problems. <laughs> I lived in Midway. When Evo attack blasts, you're bringing a school, school closer to that blast zone. That concrete won't be cured for about five years on your foundations. These are lies. And I'll tell you what, my house there in Midway, I had broken windows in it. I sat right there when they were blasting. I called up Evo attack. Oh, it couldn't have happened. I sat right there and watched the glass crack. I lived on Borgen Road. I know exactly about these sites because I've climbed all over them all my growing up years. And I think you're picking a bad location besides. And not only that, when I lived in Midway, the bus route was bas backwards. They should have came in one way and went out the other way. Both times they would cross the highway. Did you ever decide to run for school board mm -hmm. at that time to maybe correct some of this stuff? That maybe in a, you were concerned at the time that no, I never thought about doing it. 
but I'm thinking about it now <laughs> because when we're done with this and the Edward Gilbert people are on their own paying for their own buildings, which don't need a lot of repairs to contrary to what you think. <laughs> and not only that, that campus is large enough on the high school end for when I graduated from Elvith, it would fit Virginia, Gilbert, and Elvith in that campus right now. I'll just, I'll just comment on that, that maybe when we get this academy built, we will have such a workforce that if our building needs repair, we'll bring those kids in to fix it. We already have that on the range. There isn't enough jobs here. And not only that, Maybe we can well, take let's, another let's comment. Listen to the yeah. environmentalists yeah. yeah. here. Right. You're Mr. never going to have policy. Mr. Chair, yeah. we're on Virginia. Are, are we on Virginia? No, yeah. yeah. I, I, I apologize. I mean, I know, I'm just, I'm just, yeah. Ma'am. I just want to comment on the high school for Virginia and the one for hippies. I've been in both going for sports activities and stuff. And man, I'm glad I never went to school there because I would have been still there as a senior looking for where I need to get out of there because of all the hallways. But Athens campus is, was the, they, when they built it, they had the vision of how to build the school, for one thing. The other thing I want to ask is Virginia residents. You're putting in money now for a new multi-sports complex. Where's that money coming from? Any taxes or sales is that all tax. free? Sales tax. Sales tax. Sales tax. Sales tax. Thank you. We're paying for old. that Talk too. So now, city no, hall, let her, let her way talk. Up, way up. Order. Order. you need a new order. fire department and police order. station and that. Where is that money coming from? That's going to be up to the that gonna, That'll be up to us, ma'am. Yes. And they yeah. really yeah. need a That's fire department over there. That's what we're doing with the fire department school. That'll be up to us, ma'am. Yes, it will be. Those are your taxes, not mine. Well, then don't worry about and it, then please. I'm just telling the Virginia people if they ever looked at it, everything that's going to come down to you guys. And now you're going to put a new school with taxes mm -hmm. on that, too. We're I am for still for the academy. I still think we need to do the academy, but I will still not vote for that school. And the academy will never yes. happen. Academy well, will then never it happen. should. I don't know why you hey, can't let's address our comments to the board and not to other audience members, please. please. Uh, I had a question about the location. Is the new elementary school not going to be the same place where the college currently exists? Right, is not behind the in that same area. It's going to be behind the college, but so, more to the north. But if they can survive there, can right. the, I guess there's a rock in a way or something. I mean, I don't mean to be condescending. I'm not a condescending person, but I mean, there are buildings out there that are currently surviving, are there not? Yes, yeah, Gilbert right. schools. They're sitting on good ground. But where the new buildings are proposed to be built. I mean, thank you. Yeah. Irene? Yes, um, I'm Irene Henderson from Virginia High School. And um, I have to say that <coughs> in Virginia, have looked at all of this and they're willing to make the sacrifice for the good of the students. Also, also, people keep talking about taxes going up, taxes going up. I'm sorry, whether you get a new school or not, every year your taxes go up. Your taxes don't go down. They always go up. So that's not even an issue. Okay, thank you. Oh, okay, I was uh, a few things because I've been involved in this process for a long time, and the people that have been involved in this process for a year, or two years, we get frustrated because it's been a long time. We're exhausted because it's been a long time. We've done lots of nights, many, two, three nights a week, and a lot of hours, hundreds of hours. Parts of our task force, we've had financial experts, bankers, school finance different groups we brought in. Um, we've had workforce experts from our region. We've had business leaders, people from the Chamber of Commerce come in and talk to our task force. We've had building and grounds and transportation people come in and talk to us. We all weren't experts, but we reached out to the experts. People that have degrees, people that do this for a job, for a living. People that have the community members in this, weren't trying to pull anything over anyone. And so we get really frustrated as task force members because we spent a lot of time and we knew that this was gonna be difficult. When I got into this process, 
I was a 9th through 12th person because I said we need to do something and put our foot in the door because this is going to be damn near impossible for us to do, to get three communities to agree on this, no matter what it is. But then I started, I went to the meetings, I learned, I was receptive to the information and the facts that were presented to us. We're spending $5 million to maintain the buildings the way they are. They're falling apart. $5 million annually, that's $2.5 million annually that we are spending that other districts are not spending to maintain them. We're spending $2.5 million annually, more than other districts across the state. $2.5 million? That's a lot of money that could be going to expanding curriculum, expanding offerings, providing opportunities to our schools and to our communities. We can do better. It scares the death out of me if this is a no vote. Yep. For my kids, for mm -hmm. our kids, for our communities. The status quo is killing our communities. $2.5 million. Guess what? If it's a no vote, they're going to have to start spending more than $5 million to maintain them. Because $5 million is not cutting it. They're falling apart. You can say no to this, you can say no to the next one, and guess what? They have to do something. Because if the buildings fall down, if they continue to deteriorate, because they are deteriorating, half of the Gilbert School, not half, sorry, a part portion of the Gilbert School is sitting empty because it's condemned. Mm -hmm. yep. There's parts of the Evelyn School that you don't use. We can do better. Virginia has a lot of issues. I'm not going to pick on Virginia because Virginia, we acknowledge that there's issues. There's issues in all of these schools. If you just want to know the numbers specifically, Evelyn Gilbert, if you took Virginia out of the picture, Evelyn Gilbert is spending $1.2 million annually more than the average school in the state to maintain the buildings the way you see them. It isn't cutting it. That's a lot of money that could be expanding programming. That's what changed my mind from a 9 through 12 building to we need to do as much as we can because every one of our meetings, we had these disagreements, we talked about these things. We bickered, we did not agree, but we had one guiding principle and what is best for kids. Every meeting, what's the best option for kids? And the task force has done every single thing that we can do to put in front of the people and to recommend to the boards the best plan that we could put together for all of our kids. Initially, it was a, what are we going to do? 9 through 12, 5 through 12, 6 through 12. And then people started asking legitimate questions. How do you justify doing a 7 through 12 building and leaving the elementary kids in the same crappy buildings that are falling apart? That's what changed the directory of this conversation. I couldn't answer that kid, that question. I couldn't. When my daughter gets older and she's in that falling apart building, whether she's going to Evelyn Gilbert or she's going to Virginia, because I'm an Iron Ranger and I want them to go here and I want to have a community here in 10 years, in 20 years, I could never look her in the eyes and say, you know what, I support it. I support it sending you through that building that's falling apart 10 years from now, 20 years from now, because if it isn't now, it's never. If we don't do this now, it's never. The, what changed my mind is when I realized how much money we are spending annually just to maintain the buildings and the realization after we walked through them. And I ask, and this gets back to the review and comment of why we're here. Professional studies, Roger Warner, DSGW, ARI, ICS, and Krauss Anderson, those are professional organizations. They have been into our buildings, they have inspected our buildings, they've looked at our buildings, the community, the task force people have been in our buildings. They are problems. Our kids in our in a building, they realize they're problems. Could we remodel them? Yes. But the community members that went to the task force meetings, because we cared and we knew this was a process, that this is a one-time shot, whether you believe it or not. We looked at it, and the best thing we could do for kids was not remodeling those schools was not the status quo. And so as a task force and as a representative of that group, 
that's spent hundreds of hours with many of our colleagues that have spent hundreds of hours on this. We couldn't go to you with a plan that wasn't the best option we could come up with for our kids. And that's why you see the option there. Is it perfect? No. And guess what? You're never going to see a perfect plan. I guarantee you're not going to see a closer one than this. If you choose not to, and the vote, no. And if you choose to go down that road and you're a school board member, you owe it to the communities to say what the alternative is. What is the alternative? In Eveleth Gilbert, do you realize you're losing in the next year? You've already lost over a half a million dollars in mining revenue. Okay? For the last two years, you've deficit spent. The mines are moving out of the Eveleth Gilbert School District. That means you're losing mining royalties. You're losing the money that you've had to subsidize paying for these old buildings. And that money is going away. Your deficit spending. What are you going to do? What is your five or 10 year plan? Because if this is a vote no, man, I'm scared to death if I'm at Gilbert. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is your plan? You owe it as a school board member to tell your communities what your vision is. The people that elected you deserve to know what the alternative is. If you're a no vote person, how are you going to change the trajectory of where Evelyn Gilbert School Board is going, where the school district is going? Because I don't know where my kids are going to go, but I'm going to send my kids to the best damn opportunity that they're going to get, whether it's Virginia or Evelyn Gilbert. And frankly, your teachers, the ones that have dedicated their lives to public education, are pleading with you. <clears throat> because they understand the opportunities we can do together. When we bring our buildings together, we need, everybody's already talked about it, in order for us to offer the electives, in order for us to do the vision that you've said, Tom, which I can't wrap my head around why you don't support this, because this is exactly what you just described of project-based learning and vocational technolo tech technical education. I just don't understand how, where you've gone, because this is that plan. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Troy. Tucker. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to ask questions first. Oh, yeah. I will bring in one pointer. Um, okay. All right. Back when I originally first started, I was on a facilities committee. All right. At that time, I suggested to give to the voters two choices. One, building new. Two, renovating. At that time, I stated there are professional firms within the state of Minnesota that's <clears throat> all they do is go into these older buildings that they're saving, they're renovating, bring them up to standards of 21st century standards with the help of federal money, different grants and everything. At that point, it was agreed upon, yes, to get this study done by this independent firm that didn't have anything to do with ICS or anything that was going on at the time. It never materialized. The facilities committee would never do that, it was build new. So you did get this out at the very beginning to give the people inputs, the voters inputs of both communities. And we can, this is what it's gonna cost to renovate, to bring it up to 21st century code. This is what it's going to cost to build new. It never materialized. But it was agreed upon, yes, it should be done. That's we never agreed to that. No. I was at every damn meeting for the facilities. That no, 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 that no, was, no. This was our district back then. Back then. He's back, talking back then. Our district back then. Okay. <laughs> I thought he was talking about it. Now, I'm sorry. I, I apologize. Tom, no, thank you. Thanks, Tom. Uh, Tucker, you have to stand over here because I was supposed to be at Dairy Queen at 7, so I'm going to try to make it quick. Is, is it May 15th yet? Um, so, I, I was on the fence kind of for a little while, and Mr. Chad reprimanded me a little bit for some of the things I said, but which is a good thing. And I thought about it for a while. I talked to Karen Terrio. I came up to her classroom. 
Somebody, I'm trying not to put you on the spot, Mrs. Terriol, but she, she's taught at Franklin for a while. And, and, and she's in favor of the new building. I, I like old buildings. I, I was one of the kids who open enrolled at Virginia from Ebleth Gilbert. I walked across the same stage at graduation that my, gra my grandma had in 1958, which I think is really cool. I'll probably cry when they knock down Goodman Auditorium, but it's the only thing at that campus worth keeping, I think, and it's not worth that much, really, in the, in the long run. Um, I mean, I think what won me over is that the teachers want this. The people who, who are in the, have been in these buildings and would be in the new ones, and as, as Troy said, there are, where'd you go? You're back there. Uh, there are people who have studied this and decided that this is what we have to do. And I, mean, I like the old buildings. I, the kids on, that I coach on the speech team call me grandpa. I mean, I like old things, but I think that the, the old buildings that I've seen in old pictures don't really exist anymore. They're not the same buildings. And I think it's amazing they've lasted as long as they have. Um, and the people who built them probably said the same things at meetings that we're saying here now. Um, I'm, I'm craving ice cream, so I'm going to close with, with one last thing. If any of you watched Mad Men, it's a really great show, and something kind of, I've been watching it, rewatching it for the fourth time, and I was watching an episode, and it kind of, there was a light bulb that thought, okay, now totally 100% vote yes. Don Draper was talking to these guys from Madison Square Garden. This was a fictional ad agency in 1963. And Madison Square Garden wanted to knock down Pennsylvania Railroad Station in New York City. Beautiful building. It's a shame they knocked it down. And Madison Square Garden people were upset about backlash that the public you know, thought they were going to was going to give them for tearing down this beautiful building. And Don Draper said, "Change is neither good nor bad. It simply is. It can be greeted with terror or joy. A tantrum that says I want things the way they were." Or, how did that go? Or, or, or with a dance that says, look, something new. And after I heard Don Draper say that, he said a lot of other things he shouldn't have said, it was the 60s. <laughs> but after I heard him say that, I thought, that's, that's what this is about. I mean, it, it's, let's dance. Yeah. Um, I could have said a lot more, but I think a lot of other people said what needed to be said. I mean, I, I've talked to teachers, and. <laughs> I mean, that's what they want, that's what the kids want. I mean, five, five years ago, I didn't want them to knock down the old buildings either. But that was five years ago. Um, I mean, Kennedy and I wanted to bring back James Madison, and we had this whole harebrained scheme, and, and now it, I'll, I, I can leave that in the dust. And, and as Mrs. Kemp pointed out, maybe there are ways to redevelop the campuses we have. Make Franklin an assisted living facility, I don't know. Then you have two cool buildings. You, you have a, a stuff at the current campus, and same for Gilbert. And then you have some nice buildings across the highway end of Virginia that can hopefully make everybody happy. Um, I guess I don't know what else I have to say. I'm, I'm voting yes. I hope other people do too. If you don't want to, that's fine. But <laughs> if you're on the fence, I, I hope you talk to some of the people who I did to try to see why they're so passionate about this. And, and hopefully, when May 15th finally arrives, hopefully, hopefully very soon, <laughs> so that this is, so that this is, yeah, so that we can dance, so that this is, so that the, the, the dance begins. Yeah. I'm going to go get ice cream. <laughs> into the Virginia portion of the Q&A because that's the direction that I want to go, <laughs> cooperating with Virginia. Um, uh, I had a chance to serve on the um, two of the different advisory uh, committees that, that formed starting back in the summer. And um, the, the, the committee that got together and looked at the academy models, what those career paths should look like. And then I had a chance to be on the finance uh, advisory committee in the fall. They were both wonderful processes. And um, I learned a lot as, as part of that process, um, you know. And and what I learned in the in the finance uh, committee is what we have available to us to fund this project, these projects, versus what it means to do it alone. And I don't I don't I don't like the go it alone option 
purely from an objective financial uh, perspective. And it's just worth kind of maybe just mentioning once again, I think it was touched on earlier that uh, this outside monies, the, the 81% is not available um, to us if we elect to, to, to go it alone. It's not available. Um, and what our 19% buys us relative to, um, and, and that, that dollar figure, relative to so many other referendums around the state, um, what that buys us is such a multiplier of what we would get otherwise if we were to go alone. If we get we get some fixits, <coughs> um, but the idea is to cooperate, and, and all of that money. What what, 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 we, what we're getting for our nineteen percent is immense compared to what we would get uh, otherwise. That same dollar figure if we go it alone. So, um, you know, I just wanted to bring that up as a, an active participant in these processes. I want to thank the school boards for allowing me to participate in these processes. It was very meaningful. Um, you know, the, the, these processes involved everybody and it was done the right way and it was done over the course of a, a long time with uh, a lot of very, very um, good 360 degree input. So just want to say thank you and um, that's about it. John, that was so well said. Um, jump in on that. Can you imagine turning down $137 million? I'm not, and I didn't, I didn't attach that to John. I was just playing off what he said. That's what we would be doing, is turning down $137 million. For our area, for our school district. That, you know, and the second thing is, if you want to talk about um, remodeling buildings, I'm a little bit um, of an historian like Tucker. Um, just come through the Virginia campus one day, come to door 14, and I, no, I mean this, and I'll show you around, and I'll probably show you six additions. And every time an addition was made, an inefficiency became, and we lost light every time. We lost windows, we lost light, and we gained some space, but inefficiencies happened every time. So to try to remodel these current buildings inside their outside walls, we've been doing it since the first one in 1972 when the annex annexed the two buildings. We were creative on the name. But it, that's when it started and we've been doing it since. And nowhere is the Virginia campus efficient. And we've remodeled, I'm telling you, probably six times. And nowhere, you just can't continue to retrofit in 1917 starts. You can't do it. Now, I believe as I drive by Eveleth, there are some add-ons also. If I look back by the tennis courts, I think there's a silver um, addition. I'm not, pardon me, I've been there for sports. I like those two. And it, you can't keep adding on. And a lot of times, you have to be careful when you say, Merritt was built 30 years ago. And that's just a specific, and I apologize, it's not meant to be. It's nearing 40. A lot of times we, for, we lose 10 years and when we try to remember when something was built. Back to the 1989 comment of the new gym in Virginia. I mean, it's a long time ago. It's a long time ago. These buildings are old and they are inefficient. But come on by any time if you want to see a several remodels at our campus downtown. <coughs> Willie, I'm the first grad. I'm the first graduating class from the Merritt Elementary, and I resent that comment. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was still teaching there then. <laughs> I go to lunch every day. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
And I don't think Tim would mind if I paraphrase what he was saying. And it's that phrase I'm sure you've all heard a lot. Time to pay it forward. Okay? Deanna, you talked about the co-location that we were here. And you talked about today how teachers are really enthused about what's happening. They were five years ago. Had the atmosphere been more welcoming, they would have come forward. And I give the teachers today all kinds of credit for coming forward. You have a welcoming atmosphere by and large. Okay. One question I have for Mr. Chad. I was in the high school today and a couple days ago. And I saw what appeared to be a handwritten thing on your door that said doctor. Are we a doctor? <laughs> hey, oh, one of my colleagues was, was kind of messing around with my sign on there. Okay, so it's still missing. It's still missing. Yeah, I'm no, no, it's still missing. Okay, just jokes. Well, I think your guest column on April 28th was fantastic. It should be, it is a great tutorial for anybody that wants to vote or will be voting in anything related to school business, either a bonding referendum or election board members. Great job. The board members, I've been where you are, I've sat on a board. I've taken the same oath of office that you have. And I want to compliment you on what you have done. You are living up to what I think are the most important words in that oath. Advocate for public education. You have done that. Thank you. All right. That's it for questions. I got one question. Oh, that Alexander. Did you guys make a video? Is it on one of the websites? It's, if you go to their website, it, it's just Alexandria High School, Alexandria, Minnesota. Okay. You'll see the pools, you'll see the gyms, you'll see the performing arts center. Classrooms? Classrooms. Classrooms. So oh, it's it's class. in 30 seconds long, the video on their website. Yep. About the academies, about the whole. Yep. There's, it's, there's it's a pretty, whole. It's, it's impressive. But call them there. If you have questions, call the principal down there. They'll yeah. gladly talk to people and call teachers. And they're Tim. You can't find it, stop it. We'll help. Tim, you're next. Uh, so I, I just I just wish that all of the I'm I'm Tim Strasser, I'm a teacher in Elwood and I am a resident of Pike. Go Pike. Um, <laughs> but I wish that all of you that, that are very adamant against this process, I wish you would have joined us. We had so many meetings and your ideas seem really we could have worked at cooperating and using some of the, those ideas, but you just kind of, you just stayed to the sides and you let us do all the work and then now you're like, that's, that's a horrible idea. We wanted you to join us because that would have, we could have solved some of these problems, but now we're, we're butting heads because we went one way and you didn't want to go there, but you didn't want to join us Maybe to help towards the direction. What's that? Maybe some of us couldn't have joined you. I work. I want to rest and eat and everything else and, 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 and pull before stuff. Definitely. It's just that I just go to vote. I, I come sure. to these because, yeah, because there's, Bill. I guess Tim, there are things going hey, on that I thought they would yeah. Excuse me, but uh, Mr. Strasser has the floor right I'm now. Sorry. Yeah. No, that's okay, that's okay, that's okay. But I mean, I guess. There were so many ways that you could have like at least brought your input without even going to the meetings. You, there were phone calls, there were emails, there were there were so many ways that your ideas could have been incorporated. But like I said, you, you decided not to. And then now you're 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 upset about, like I said, the direction that we're going when you didn't really do any of the, the work to help. And I wish you would have, because like I said, it could have been we could have incorporated a lot of your ideas, but now we're at a point where we're, it's too late for that. I was all and that's for the unfortunate. academies, I'm not going to say. That's sure. why I thought it was going sure. in that direction. Mm -hmm. Until it was going to be Okay, uh, you're, you're painting us as people that are totally against us. We're not. But you presented everything in a very, very nebulous manner. Now, this fellow that just talked about two and a half million dollars a year, two and a half million dollars more than the average school. What does that mean? 
Does it mean we spent two and a half million dollars or are we spending ten and a half million dollars? Why can't you people you give us some real facts and that not real. nebulous statements? That's all people want was information. <laughs> and as far as input goes into the school board, I attended PTA meetings in the years past and I don't have children in school, so I don't have any say in any in anything. That's why nobody participated. In your but you do have a say in it because you're part of our community, and you're good, you have to vote on this idea as well. So you are you are a stakeholder, and I we want you to be an active and, stakeholder. And I can vote no for it. Very true. I don't believe true. in anything that you're saying. I'm sorry to that. If that's rude, okay. sir. Okay. That's just rude. Doesn't matter. Because okay, let's see. We have to wait to find out what the please. information is. This so that, is all opinions. And no, very little facts. That's false. There are reports that are available on both of the district websites. There is a report that has been submitted to the Minnesota Department of Education. And all of the school boards, school board members, and the superintendent's phone numbers and contact information is available on the websites. You could call any one of us with specific questions if you couldn't have made any of the 100 meetings. And I would probably get the same treatment that those people are getting no. because I question your authority. Nope. That's, that's what that's, that's what these right. meetings have been for is to have presenting it to the public. Hey, order, order. Hey, listen, I just want to say one thing before I forget because I'm getting old. Okay. I just want to say one thing. When this meeting wraps up and we adjourn, I want every single one of you, every single one of you people that go out of here and be kind to one another, regardless of how you're voting. Here. Okay? I don't want people to get that I mean, everybody's entitled to their vote, so let's just be kind to each other. I you mean, can say yes, you can, can say, say no. Absolutely. It's up to That's you. But the, the hostility and the, the nebulism and everything, unless you're a total idiot, why would you put all these numbers that are being thrown around? Two and a half million dollars for the average. Well, I don't. I don't. Just wait. Just wait. Okay, that's enough of that. Miss Jam, you had your hand up. No, but I'm not a total idiot. I know. I know. If numbers are thrown at me, I check. I verify. All right, Miss Jam, you have the floor. So yeah, I'm. I'm not an idiot. If a number is given to me, I check the source. These are actual valid numbers. And if we want to talk about the no committee, no, I have the floor. I have the floor. If we want to talk about the no committee, not people that want to vote no, that's their right. But if we want to talk about the no committee and the fact that they are saying we, with the yes vote, are wasteful spending, I think putting a $1.2 million Band-Aid every year on a building that should not be used is foolish. No Those kidding. people could be called no complete idiots. All right, hey, that's it. That's it's enough. Nice. We're not, okay. we're here. One more question. Uh, I, th I think we should move to the next Let me Is that it? Try. Mm -hmm. Did I really miss all this? Make it quick. It's hard for me. I know. <laughs> Put your notebook down. Yeah. 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 Two point five million dollars. The five million dollars that you said that we're idiots about. That was presented to the board. It's public information. What isn't public information is things that have been thrown against the wall since this has been out for a vote. That's where we get frustrated. As task force members, again, we tried to be as transparent, we've thrown out information, we spent hours in trying to make the public aware. The school boards are doing, the school districts are doing everything they can to make the people aware. Now you might disagree with it and that's fine. You can be a no vote, I completely respect you. I respect you if you're a no vote. I don't, I don't respect 
assuming that we're lying to you because we are not lying to you. over the average? What is the The average spending on maintenance and utilities in the state of Minnesota is 2.5 less than what we are currently spending. So that's an average for every school. That yes. on average across and the we're state. We're spending two and a half million more, more than the average. Why don't you state it? We have. That's what I mean. I don't know how I can restate it. But we're frustrated because we're trying to be honest, we're trying to be transparent, and we feel that the other side isn't transparent, and that's okay. I don't care if you're a no-vote person. That has nothing to do with the frustration. It's we feel there's a lot of other entities that are involved in this that are presenting incorrect information. And I don't know if anybody has ever asked another entity to be involved in this process or where some of the information is coming from. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks, George. Is there any comments from the superintendents? Uh, no, I would just say that uh, from my point of view, when all of this started, um, we have worked, because I'm not from here, but it was very clear in talking to folks up here that there were scars from the co-location of two, 2014. A lot of people were not happy with the way things worked. There were a lot of people who were frustrated with how the process was set up. So a challenge was to create a very different process where we had a lot of public input, we've had a lot of community meetings, and we didn't know when it started, where it was gonna go, uh, but I'd have to say that Folks have been very willing to consider possibilities. Folks have been very willing. And I just want to thank everybody who has been to the meetings, who has listened to all the different options, discussed those back and forth. I think the community has done a very good job on this, on this two-year journey, two-plus year journey. Thank you. Superintendent Kerry? Um, I guess my final comment would be that um, is it as uncomfortable as this meeting has been at times tonight, um, I mean, I'm sure that none of you came here looking to start arguing with each other. I mean, it probably was a healthy thing for, for all of us to get those feelings out on the table. And, and hopefully from from here on out, I mean, we, we did our thing tonight and we can move on and, uh, and uh, have a successful vote on, on May 14th and, and work together to put together a world-class facility that, that everyone in the state is going to be jealous of. And uh, that's all I got. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Could I? Uh, I got to change my battery. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was waiting for. I got to change my almost oh, battery. Is this the last meeting for the for the board? Uh, yes. Yes. Our regular board meetings. We'll we will make that announcement. I guess. Uh, Will be our Evel Gilbert's regular not our regular board meeting will be May 13th, 2019, 6 p.m. in our board room. And ours will be to six o'clock, May 13th, Monday. Um, Almost Monday. The Rose Bill. Can I just say one more thing? Yeah. No. I I just I just want to reiterate. You know. No, you're done. Okay. Stop. I'll let you. Okay. okay. So I just want to reiterate that this has been a very public process and transparent process and we've invited community citizens to come in different businesses and everybody we possibly could invite we've invited we've put it in the paper it's been on Facebook it's been a, uh, anywhere we could put it we've put it to try and get people here and just just so you know if this is a yes vote after May 14th that that doesn't mean all communication with citizens are, is now cut off. This has been a process and will continue to be a process with community input. And I think that there's been some fear that that's not gonna be the case. But if as long as I'm on the board, that will be the case. So just so you know, it's a public process. And to piggyback what, uh, to piggyback what uh, Randy says, if this is a yes vote, then the work has just begun. It's not, it's, there's more work involved. And I will say again that when we leave here, be nice to each other. Don't, 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 don't be. Respect everybody. Respect everybody's opinion and vote. So 
lady that was just here did not respect our opinion, asking questions. Oh. And she came up and she was very nasty okay. to my husband. Oh, I don't, I didn't, I guess. And, and, I'm, and I, we I are not know, a, I'm entitled to We have not adjourned yet, but yeah, okay. we're not adjourned. You guys have done a better job than we have lots of <laughs> <laughs> respect that. Okay, uh, I am motion. We have one comment. One comment. Okay. The high school is not going in Brit. <laughs> <laughs> we want to be able to live. If we did that, we absolutely know that the public would crucify us. So please understand that is out floating out there and it's got to stop. You gotta clarify that. If for the point zero 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 one chance that those sites do not work. It's still not going to it has to be the Evelyn Gilbert Board and the Virginia Board that agree to a location. Correct. There is Correct. zero chance of Evelyn agreeing to Brit. Evelyn Gilbert agreeing to Brit. And yes. zero Evelyn chance Gilbert. of Virginia agreeing to somewhere south of Evelyn Gilbert. Brit. Wow. Okay. Zero chance. So that's, please, that, those are the things that are not factual that we have problems with. Is there a motion to? I will motion to Support. Adjourn. <laughs> Support. <laughs> <laughs> so that kind of thing. Aye. Those votes. Motion carried. Thank you very much.